Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint The Last Garden. This is a really beautiful fantasy, ornate garden gate scene in acrylic. I'm going to explain it step by step, every technique, every material, every color mix. Right now, this is a live stream, so I want to welcome everybody to our live stream. Uh, we had a little bit of a delay, but we did manage to get around it. As you see, after we fixed the stream connectivity, we had a bit of a sound thing going on. So it should be all addressed. Let us know how uh, the sound is. Um, you're gonna like a bunch of things about this. I know some of you are concerned because this is on a round canvas, but actually I'm gonna be sharing with you some workarounds that you may really, really like. Um, if you're able to go to the next slide, John. Okay, so on the mic is my husband John. He helps ha, us do all this crazy. I'm gonna try to get it, give us a start. A so start. So let's see here. Start. Ooh. Oh, I think we need. Uh oh. Slide to there. There we is. go. Oh, let's go back there a little bit. Okay. So make me small. There we go. We're and show me the slides. There we go. I'm there small. You are. Yay! <laughs> See, this I'm is getting slides. my stuff. Here there we go. There we go. This is fantastic. So round canvases. The reason I feel really confident uh, introducing you to these guys is because there's so many workarounds. As you see, you can take any canvas that you have, draw the circle on the canvas, and then just leave the outer edges white. There's an example of it hung. It actually looks really cool. Um, I also made sure there were a ton of options available. I, because no one's put really a demand on them, a lot of the round and unusual shape Victorian canvases are in stock places and at a very good price. Um, I'm giving you two examples of a high-end and economy canvas. I'm doing this painting on the Frederick's Value series. So you can see exactly how that looks. I knew you guys would wonder, can I frame it? <sighs> oh, yes, you can. See that gorgeous round frame? There are hundreds and hundreds of choices. And you see that bubble glass? Mm -hmm. There are special glass inserts for these, for these crazy Victorian-shaped canvases. You can frame them. So you can glass them so they can look amazing on your wall. I'm going to show you some examples as my moldings get in and we put them up and hang them. So that's why it is. So you can use the canvas that you have. You can grab one of the round ones and don't worry about framing. There's always a way to do everything. And of course, if you check the description below, besides all the materials, the link to the website, if you go to the calendar and click the event today, it'll take you to an event page where there's some other uh, references for different types, verticals, portraits, landscapes. I just try to make sure you guys have everything you want, including a traceable so you don't have to draw. All right, let's mm -hmm. look at the materials today. Today, 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 today. The materials for today. <gasps> ah, so here are all the materials. We did this today, one, to pay tribute to Kevin the Kraken because everyone said they missed him. And also to make sure you had a screen of all the materials that were being used um, also, extra are going to be some glazing liquids and things uh, going on, and we will have the PDF step-by-step -step to the patrons soon. I think I'm ready to just get started, because this was such a fun painting. Doing the garden gate. So I guess it's not the last garden, it's the garden gate. I named things ten times. Step one is called, uh, bad things happen. <laughs> so... I had my round canvases, but I had made these, um, can, you, can you pause for two seconds? Sure. I had made these little sketches on it with a graphite uh, charcoal pencil, um, and a really dark one. It was not a good choice. You'll see that in a minute, but you'll see me fix it. And I just also want to say that, Patricia, you were the wish that I remembered to get on there, so a cure uh, for lupus and relief and remission for her right now. So I'm hoping that uh, she feels better. Uh, you can see the colors that are out right now are my CAD, uh, yellow, my, um, I think my bird sienna, my phthalo green, my tight-knit yellow, which you can also use Naples yellow light. If you don't know anything about tight-knit yellow or Naples yellow light or exchanges, the moderators can link you to the blog we have about that. Mm -hmm. I also have CAD, uh, red, um, and magenta. I have titanium white and zinc white. Let's go. So let's see. Oh, wait. I'm going slowly. This You're is just... me going, hmm. This is my last. I have new round canvases in, but that oh, was my last added, round canvas. You added something. I'm what, grabbing. What did you add? Huh? You added a paint. See the, see the one oh, right underneath yellow? blue. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. See how great this is? Like, we can do this and totally make sure we miss nothing. So I have to sit. 
but we've made it work. And that's what you do. You make it work. Um, Miha Tehal wants to know how to mix these from primary colors. Uh, watch for the, uh, this coming up, Niha, uh, Nihal, because I will be doing uh, videos on primary color mixes. However, these are pigments, and that is a little bit different. Okay, all right. I've got my brush and all my paints, and I'm facing this decision that I made to put these black words on there, and then I'm putting on some dots purple as well, thinking, you know, I might as well put all the colors out at the beginning because... <laughs> What do I want to do? I want to dry paint. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I'm getting my, this is the ultimate varnish brush, and I got it slightly damp. And like my watercolor pencil wishes, I'm going to brush this image that I, I wrote out. I don't know. I was putting images and pictures into canvases. I thought it would be cool. This was, did not result cool. But here's the thing. Things work out, right? So here I am. I know I am having this whole thing with all this dark pigment on my surface. What am I going to do, right? If you watch one of these on Instagram, you don't know how they solve that problem. Well, you're about to watch me solve that problem in three <laughs> easy steps because I don't want to give up my canvas. I am pointing out the different colors that I have on the palette, which we kind of went over, and I'm going to get a little bit of my titanium white. This is my more pigmented white because I know I'm going to need some color. And I'm going to brush it out on my surface to see how that's going to go. And right away, I see it's going to be a moment. This is that you have this in life, right? That it's going to be a moment moment. And I didn't want to edit this out. I didn't want to take this out and have you not see it because we all get here. This, it's going to be a thing. And you don't want to feel like, oh, man, I got to stop and just over this whole thing or I got to throw it out. This is me just going, you know what? I'm going to persevere. So I grab some phthalo blue, and I'm like, let's just get a base color going. <laughs> Hover it with a layer of phthalo blue. Because there's nothing like phthalo, is there, John? Nope. Phthalo. It's got the thing glow. It's I'm a just brushing it out color. messy. Uh, my, my brush is moderately damp, but I had pre-wet the canvas, so it was a thing. The nice thing about that is if you have any of those weird coatings, it does seem to resolve that. Now, drying for step two. This step is called things get better, but not all the way better. Mm. <laughs> so now I'm taking my Naples yellow, realizing, oh, I grabbed a little blue in that, but fine. And then I'm going to get some green there. Oh, because I know I'm going to need that nice green. And I begin to brush this color out. And it's, I can see right away. This is a journey of the many layers. Oh, so many layers. Um, Suzanne Briggs says, why are you doing the tutorial this way? Um, so, Suzanne, I had a little uh, health event the other day, and I have to sit down for a while. I am wearing one of those little heart thingies, and we're doing the um, lesson sitting down, and we didn't want to cancel ever, all the events. We didn't want to, like, not do them, and we realized we had an opportunity to make a lesson that was more organized, that the materials were clear, that the all options were clear, and that I could really engage with the community and explain the techniques as they were happening. So hopefully, we did one of these last night. People loved it. I'm hoping you do today. All right, let's go. See, we, John has to pause on me. You can pause the vertical. I'm grabbing my phthalo blue and a little bit of the previous mix of the tight-knit yellow and the green and then the white, and I'm going to begin to Create the distant and diffused atmosphere. And that's why I like using the ultimate varnish mop here. You could use the Princeton mop, which is uh, in the description list at the beginning and also right here um, and also down below and all the places so you can find it. Uh, Marilyn Mo uh, Moiser says, Hello, Cinnamon John. Everyone give her a thumbs up. Love her work. She is very good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll take that. There was um, a good question here. If you can, you do the, work on these rounds on a easel vertical. Get some double stick dots, oh. double stick dot tape. Actually, that's how I keep it still on my. Um, and this is in our our PDF. That's how I keep it still on my uh, uh, lazy Susan. Mm. I don't normally like to work flat on a table either, by the way, but the lazy Susan allows me to do so. So, at, like I said, this layer is called things get better, but they're not all the way better yet. <laughs> I'm going to be pulling out all of my varnish mops and every step I've got because as you can see, the center isn't really getting that resolved diffuse look that I want. 
grab some phthalo, grab some more of the tighten it yellow, uh, phthalo green mix and white and brush out a darker value on the edges. Now I realize the game here is to at least create a layer that begins to softly diffuse. Sometimes stuff happens to all of us. Sometimes, no matter what you do, your canvas makes you work for it. And it is making me work for it. See my see me like staring at it now? I'm staring it down. I'm oh, like, there's I was, just no way. I was to get panicking it. over mm -hmm. on my I was totally having a panic attack here that the video froze. That's just you pondering, isn't it? Am I pondering this long? Yeah, this yes. is me stumped. This is this is your hand moving Everyone ever watched, so slowly. This is the Sherpa okay. going. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do here. <sighs> okay. Um, I saw a question from Alyssa Otter. Really good question. Can you use unbleached titanium in place of zinc white? No. Unbleached titanium is as opaque as titanium white. Um, true unbleached titanium, which is made by Golden, is a actual chemical composition. Everybody else just takes a little raw sienna and adds it to titanium white pigment. Um, it was just a popular color and everybody knocked it off. Uh, <laughs> but they couldn't get the formula because that was patented. Um, what you can use is uh, mixing white or tinting white. There's even a version of this um, in craft bottle paint. So transparent white is I think what it's called in craft bottle paint at, at a couple bucks. So this is available at every level of paint experience, and I highly recommend if you're doing landscapes to get yourself some version of this because sometimes you need a white that lightens the value but doesn't change the color. I am now deepening the mix. You can see I'm brushing and deepening the mix and going, oh, I should paint all the edges of this round. That'll be super helpful. Um, at this point, I'm questioning start over or persevere. Now, obviously, I persevered. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have a video here, and I would have been making an announcement. Uh, stuff went wrong, and we are not going to continue on. Oh, thank you, Kim McKay. Thank you. I'm going to blow some bubbles for you, Kim. I'm going to blow some bubbles while I look at my canvas and go, is there going to be a way through? There you go. Those bubbles are for you. See, I'm my own bubble machine right now, Kim. You know, you just persevere. Um, could you have gesso to lessen the amount of paint you used? astutely asked Stephanie Willis. Yeah. Yeah, I could have. I could have just dried it all and gotten a good whole bind gesso like my cerulean gesso and put it out and it would have made this whole journey easier. But sometimes we get in and we get in it, don't we? Sometimes we're, we're painting and we're going and then we're in it. Uh, Brenda says, love all your videos. Rest and get better. I'm resting. And again, they're just checking for a thing because I had a moment with my heart where my heart was beating irregularly and they're just making sure I'm okay and I'm just supposed to be chill. And look, I'm going to tell you right now, the doctor said, do not exercise vigorously. And I said, sir, I can do that. I can do that right now. <laughs> well, The butcher's there's... wife is sending a little lemon sticker. Thank you. There was a conversation between the doctor and they said, no more standing at the canvas at the surface for hours and hours and hours right now. So they work things out. So they verify that so everything is chill and, it's right. and cool. And so I was like, that's uh, that's reasonable. But so far, so good. Uh, I see a comment from XXJ Hope. Uh, um, oh, OMG, hi, hi. Uh, right now, YouTube is trying to decide if this comment is okay or something crazy. If you don't know and you watch a lot of lives, if you throw up a ton of emojis, YouTube goes, I think you're up to something nefarious. And then it, 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 it moderates your comment. So if you ever see that, that may not be the um, creator doing that to you. It might be the platform. Stephanie Willis, thank you for my popcorn. You can see how I've dried this. And I'm going to come back now again. Titanium white, Naples yellow. If I'm, if I'm not determined, I'm nothing. Here's your bubble, Stephanie. All right. So brushing the center, I want to get a center halo of light value. I am alternating with my tight knit yellow and my phthalo green. It gives me a very unique color. Um, it's really kind of wonderful. It reminds me of antique glass. 
On the outer edges, I will continue to darken. I used a little of my zinc there because I wanted to slightly lighten my phthalo blue, but not essentially change the hue. Why we have, why we have uh, zinc. We're gonna use zinc a lot through this project. Tabletop easel, says mm. Angela Kirkland. It's what I use. I actually, I would say it is what almost all of my community uses predominantly. Patty Hoffman, thank you so much. I know you were up early. I think your fur baby woke you up at like 4 a.m. And so I appreciate that so much. These bubbles are for you, Patty. Not wonderful? So I am just thank brushing you. it out. The trick with these brushes is it's you want to make sure that as much moisture is pulled out of them as possible and that they're mm -hmm. only slightly damp. I'm adding a nice green kind of glow to the side and now you can see the blends start to happen. Um, I imagine in a little bit I'm going to get my glazing liquid out which is the acrylic glazing liquid gloss. It is not glazing medium. It is just this product by Golden. Golden Artist Colors Acrylic Glazing Liquid Gloss. We will get into it later but I'm just brushing out more of a light value. You can see I alternate um, to the pure mix with the tightening yellow and then I get into the titanium white. Lindsay Maris says, you're one of the best teachers when it comes to painting. Lindsay, that means a lot to me because I, I try really, really, really hard to do a good job. So let me know how I'm doing today. Definitely give us feedback. That's, that's what well, we're stuck here for a minute. But let us know if this is something you think is cool and great and you want to see more of. That would be uh, really helpful. Um, Stephanie Willis, any tips for painting with cats? Um, cats want to lay in all your wet paint and they know when your paint is wet. It's a psychic connection. They have your canvas and they can totally tell and they want to lay in it. If you do get any paint on your pet, remember that rubbing alcohol takes it out of their fur uh, in, in a way that doesn't hurt them and you don't have to worry about that. And if they do drink a little bit of paint water, for the most part, they should be okay. Um, other than that, uh, realize everything you, that cats love to chew brushes, they do. Um, you may have to put your brushes up out of your cat's reach. I've gotten my golden glazing liquid gloss out and immediately gotten some Diox purple in it. Of course. Immediately. Uh, Cinnamon, I have charter plates. Should I put two coats of gesso on first? I would prep those, make sure they're prepped with a paint that's designed to stick to a ceramic surface. Uh, there are gessos for that and, and starters for that. Uh, actually check Plaid and um, uh, also Deco for products in those ranges. There's some good stuff. And of course, PBO. So white in the center go I again using the glazing liquid. Not a glaze, not a retarder, a combo of both. It's a two in one. Adding little pops of yellow. This layer is called Things Finally Come Together, and I decide to not scrap the entire piece. You could probably skip a few of the crazy layers that I decided mm. to show. Uh, oh, I get, we got it. You're doing amazing as always, and there's um, lots of stuff. And Barb M is sending heart health stuff to me. And then everyone thinks it's looking amazing, John. I really you think You can it see looks I got amazing. a little pink in there, and I know I want a little pink in my sky. I want little pops of pink. Um, and the reason for these soft little moments of pink, and let's try to think of them when we're painting them in as moments. See how I'm dusting backward and forth and then kind of go up at an angle and mm -hmm. hash them in, almost weave them in. And I leave lots of open spaces, and that's because those little moments are like poetry in a painting. And it's something you want to think about when you're painting is like, does this piece leave space for my eye to rest? This is a pretty busy piece, so you really, really need to think about, is it leaving any space for my eye to have a moment to rest and to fill in the blanks? Wow, how smooth the canvas became, says Healthy Lifestyles. Yeah, it really does become smoother. Can you mix golden with the titanium white to make a mixing white? Yeah, you can. It does a really good job, too. Hmm. Yeah, you really can. You can really uh, make it glaze out, and if you can't get any zinc and you're stuck at home, it is a great way to get around. Notice how we're getting some purples in here now. It's, there's a wonderful color story going on. I'm keeping a, a real defined light center. I am brushing back and forth. This is the Princeton mop. Now, you can find these at Michael's and online. Um, if you check the description below, all the brushes that you see here, there is a store finder for everything but this one. 
This one you can get at the Brush Guys Michaels. I think uh, Hobby. I'm not sure. Does Hobby Lobby have Princeton? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of the places have them, Joanne's. A lot of them have them. So this is a real and inexpensive. Not too bad. Not totally cheap, but you can get it on sale. And you can see me going, here, here is this brush. Look at it. It is look another type of oval wop. What? I said, look at the brush. Look at the brush. Lisa Steen says, you really are the best teacher. I tried others and I always get frustrated and lost. Thank you so much. And make sure, you know, give us feedback. I want to know that these pieces are not losing you. So you can see I'm dusting out. I took a little of my cad yellow and my zinc white and I'm dusting out little spots of yellow, like distant bokeh glows. And, and the brush is like, I finally got my golden when the ex-husband gave me sp spending money at Michael's. That is a really nice ex-husband, so <laughs> yay to that. Uh, prayers uh, for healing and strength being sent to you and your family, says Peggy. Thank you so much. I'm going to be okay, guys. Like, all the initial tests are coming back all right. They're just doing this. Because, you know, they're doctors and they like to be safe. And, you know, that's their job. Yep. Their job. I am taking a little of my golden glazing liquid and I'm loading it into the brush and you can see I grab a little yellow and see how it just creates a little soft moment. Just soft moments in the center, lightning, lightning, lightning. Um, and what you see me doing here is I'm taking the brush and I'm actually holding it kind of at an angle like this. You see this on my hand? I have an angle like this. And that's to blend out the uh, brush marks. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed those, but sometimes when you're brushing, it, especially into the glazing medium, you get kind of little brush marks. When I want to blend it out, I start making the brush more perpendicular. So I'm mm. on the edge when I want to softly blend, very softly going back and forth, just being very, very chill. But then when I want to get down there, I'm going to uh, blend deeper. You can see I am taking my tightened yellow in my yellow green colors and making a greener, more vibrant path. This is going to be the path coming back from the gate. And uh, that's what I've got going on. Um, Irene says, were you told not to drink coffee too? No. No. I would have noticed that. I was pretty <laughs> happy at the don't exercise, but I asked about the coffee and they said it was okay. I have, ext I have uh, uh, hypothyroidism, so my blood pressure is super low. I'm taking what is called a T-square. And I am using it to create a level line. This is the, in they're almost invisible in this background. You shouldn't spend a lot of money on these, but you should have one in your art bucket if you can get one. And I'm going to use my Dritz chalking tool, which is this fella right here. It is uh, listed out in the materials list at the beginning. I like to use the Dritz company one. Um, they are not a sponsor. They were just the one that answered my consumer questions and verified this was pigmented free clay. So I didn't have to worry about it. I'm making the line where my gate is going to sit, and I'm going to draw two lines that are the width of my gate, which ended up, uh, I believe, being four inches apart. So um, I might look at that. I took notes. That's what this lets me do. I get to take notes because we were <laughs> we were doing little PDFs for uh, for the patrons so they can have the little extra extras, and um, I took a bunch of notes. Uh, Give me a pause there. It doesn't there. say. I don't know. I can't tell you. Give me a pause no, here. I, huh? Do I need to pause? Nope. I just was looking. I believe it's four inches. I'll probably measure it at some point here and go, see? See how, how wide it is? I probably will. Because I'm, I'm looking and going, can I read? First, my thing is you got to assess. I use these so much that I rub off the um, numbers on them. So I always have to vary. I have like 20 of them here. And it's always down to what one still has some measurements on it. And what one has just become a straight line. Mm. So I just put my arch in. I get a sense of the spacing and how everything is going to go. Um, and again, there's a traceable. So there's a lot of ways to get this in. There's usually many techniques that will help you get there. Uh, you don't have to, to feel like, oh, I've got to do it this way because she did it this way. You can grade it. You can project it. You can use transfer. You can sketch it in with chalk. You can freehand it in with paint. Step six. Ha, ha, ha. See, now I know what step it was. You right? So, here, pause here. I do okay. have to say something. 
So I do think it's very important to remember that whenever you're using a gridding tool or a chalk tool, that your paint be completely dry. That doesn't always translate in um, tutorials, and it's a really super important part. You don't want the paint to be soft. You don't want it to be tacky. You do want it to be dry. That also helps with this next level where I'm taking phthalo green and burnt sienna to make a dark green value using a filbert brush. These are little filberts. These are filberts. They're kind of like my cat's tongues, but they're just rounded. They don't have a point. You can use any filbert you have. Okay, we can go. I get a little bit of my uh, cad yellow into it. I'm adding back spray. I'm just trying to get a dark color. Hmm. I know now where my gate is because of those faint little lines. And I know where my ground, my horizon vanishing point is. This is going to let me really play with my bushes. I don't want to sound crazy here. I'm going to play with my bushes. This stroke is a stroke where you take the edge of the brush like this, and you touch and pull, touch and pull, touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. It's a very gentle little stroke. You layer and weave them in together. I will take little tendrils of these out and make little contour bush shapes that feel interesting and wild. And the trick to that is think like a bush. Mm. I know I sound funny, but it's actually the trick. Think like a bush. Also, it helps to look at a lot of bushes as well and practice bushes but you've got to get in the bush mindset to paint a bush uh annette von moss says hello everyone you can get the one inch mop princeton online at amazon i love learning from the art sherpa been watching for eight years hmm. eight years annette what uh that's a long time Oh, Callie Beasley says, by the way, Mods, I answered my own question about the patron thing from last night. I got all signed up. Oh. So if you'd like to be a patron, you can go to the uh, Art Sherpa website, www.artsherpa.com, and you'll see a uh, tab at the top that says patron. I highly recommend, we're, we're discontinuing uh, the dollar level very soon. I highly recommend doing five and up because at least at five, you get in the group, you get the PDFs, you get a bunch of free classes in the Facebook group and a lot of extra things. Mm -hmm. Um, so at least that level is really good. And if you have any trouble, write support at theartsherpa.com, right? And we will get back to you. We will help you. We are all about answering your questions. And we never, ever mind, do we, John? No, not at no, all. Definitely not at all. Not at all. And if you're having, you, you're, it doesn't even matter. Like, whatever question it is, you're like, I can't find my stuff. We will help you find your stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. So you can see I'm just continuing on with this mix of burnt sienna. Phthalo green, pad yellow, right? I'm making these deep forest greens. I want the interior of my bush to be very deep. I'm doing that touch pull stroke that we talked about, this one right here. And I'm just creating bushes. And the other thing that's a little hard to see here, it's really important to know, is I'm taking some of my bush past where I know the opening of my gate is. So as you can see in the finish, there's a little bit of leaves peeking out. That's how you get that effect. Welcome, Caitlin. I see Ian, the off-filter crafter, my very good friend and fellow YouTuber. How you doing, Ian? I hope you guys are doing good and that you're healthy and everything is all right. I saw your quilt and stuff on Instagram. It looked amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Irene says, I think this format gives more information somehow. Oh, too. So now what I've done here, here, pause for a second. I just want to explain this just real quick. I take my here's the thing don't lighten your greens with white initially you want to lighten first the value when you're trying to make a very bright spring green lighten with the yellow first and then add the white because with phthalo green you will get a fantastic mint which is awesome when you want it and the worst when you don't so what i've done here is i've taken a little bit of green and put it into the yellow and i'm going to do the outer curve edges for the backlight okay we can go Probably because of those moments. <laughs> uh, Irene says a filbert brush. So a filbert brush is a brush that is uh, rounded. It looks like um, it actually means cat's tongue in French, and it comes like a it's just like a little tongue shape. Um, 
And you can see it right there, it's just a branded one. My cat's tongue is just like that, but it has a bit of a point to it. It's a pointed filbert. Um, and so it gives me some different effects and edges. You can kind of use them interchangeably though. It's really down to preference. Mm. You can see I'm doing exactly what I said there, which is I'm going into my yellow first and then grabbing my white. And that's how I'm staying out of the mint colors. It's okay to add a little bit of white once you get there from the yellow. I do like to be sure and put some, not just outline the leaves uh, with the lighter color, trying to create that backlit feel, but do bring some of them into the bush to create a sense of integration because honestly light, it, it's not contained and it travels around and it reflects and some leaves will be lighter. You have to think bush will be lighter within the bush. Uh, uh, Emily says, I'm so happy I can go back and watch you do the background. Um, I love it. Uh, thanks for the blending help, says Brenda F. I'm very glad, super glad to help with blending. Mm -hmm. So you can see I'm just coming in and it's about getting those variants and weaving them into the bush. Now, I don't evenly disperse them either, right? Because if it was like I went and kind of just incorporated them as if I was mixing batter, mm -hmm. right? they wouldn't look natural. There's clumps, there's areas that catch light and areas that are distinctly in shadow. So you have to kind of, you can use the reference that you see here, like you can pause right here and literally just paint out what you see. And if you wanna get exactly what I have, that's a really good technique or strategy in these videos is to pause the video, really observe it and just put the colors where you see I put them. You can also sit there and kind of work your own sense of things and say, well, you know, I'm feeling this a little bit. That's an okay way to go too. Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. Annette and Voss says, I'm up 4 a.m. early suffering with a bad headache. You both brighten up my day. I love you both. Kisses and hugs. Annette, Queensland, Australia. Feel better soon. I am so sorry. And if anyone is from uh, Australia right now, up at 4 a.m. watching with us, thank you so much. I really appreciate that because it is the middle of the night. Mm hmm there, middle of the morning. So what I'm doing here is I'm going back again with my uh, phthalo green and mixes of my phthalo green and burnt sienna and I'm adding depth because bushes have shadows. The highlights and shadows, the way they play against each other, that's where your painting comes together. And if you look at something and you're listening to your artist brain and it says this area needs to be robust, it does. So I'm going to deepen the leaves near the base of the bush and I'm going to deepen some of them uh, that are coming in and then I'll come back in with yellow and I'm going to try to make them seem as wild and unruly as possible. So I'm going to talk to you here. Notice the other thing that I'm pointing out with my brush here is that these edges are not uniform. I didn't make a pattern. I tried to make some branches longer, some shorter. I tried to make them uh, really, really crazy and messy. I'm going to make a very, very, very bright green. These are the most backlit leaves. I'm adding so much yellow that on the palette, the color almost looks like a yellow, but it's got enough green in it to read as a green. And this is a real trick when you're trying to paint backlit leaves is when you catch those bright pops of color, those colors that almost go to the pure yellow or the pure white, that'll give your grass, your leaves, your bushes, your trees the effect of light coming through. That's how you get there. Mm. I'm really liking those bushes. What do you guys think of the bushes? Bushes, bushes, bushes. Oh my goodness. I wish that the chat had an in, I see somebody, I believe came from Russia and I wanna say hi, um, but it doesn't give me auto translate in the chat real time, which I wish it did. I wish, I wish that uh, YouTube would translate the chats and, um, uh, closed captioning into whatever localized language you have set. That'd be pretty cool. Wouldn't it? Kind of like uh, the babble fish from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It would be just amazing. Or the translator from the Starship, Enterpr uh, Starship Enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, Fiza Amir says, I love your work so much. You're such a great motivator and inspiration. I started learning how to paint by watching your videos. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you so much for your kind comment. Um, and Annette Envoss has been up since 1 a.m. <laughs> She's like awake. It, where is the traceable for the girl uh, in black and white girl shadow, which is also around? That is on the website under the traceable tab. 
just type in girl and all the girl traceables will pull up and you can scroll through and find it. it'll be right there also my moderators might be able to get that specific link to that specific traceable from the traceable i don't know if they can sometimes i make that here pause for a second i gotta catch up actually back up i want to go over this color mix very specifically and then i, I okay give let's the see. moderators a chance or can we reverse without breaking the video mm. no i can i can get into it if we can't oh you're so good you go. isn't he good look at that i can't i can't ever do that and so then john's always like can you go back and tell us what that was and then i'm like what was that? Now we can do that. All right, let's do that. Let's focus on this. So here I am. I'm going to be putting the ground in that's uh, coming forward from the bushes in front of the gate. I'm taking my cad red and my dioxazine purple. And I am going to be using zinc when I want to lighten it. I am leaning more towards the cad red on this mix. I am using the number six Cambridge which is my scruffy brush. This is a bright, it's a mix of hog and synthetic filaments right here. You can see that I like it very much. It's my messy brush and it makes messy little painterly brush strokes. I'm going to alternate between more red in the mix and more docks purple. And I'm going to use the zinc white to lighten it. And this is going to create my forced four effect, which I really, really love. The brush strokes are kind of horizontal um short little quick marks they're like they're all horizontal if i want to sort of imply that it's an embankment i might kind of curve them over and where i know i'm going to be painting like a tree in front of it or a lot of rocks i may not go into the deep details i'm going to focus my deep details on the edge space of where the forest the two tree forest ends and the light is coming through the gate how are we doing I'm doing good. Uh, Ryan Melody says, just joined the Patreon, been learning from your videos for four years now and enjoyed every moment. Thank you. If you need any help finding your dashboard, let us know and be sure you come in the Facebook group. That is also a crazy place. So you can see, what am I doing? I'm making little marks. I'm making little dashes. I'm filling in. I get a little bit longer there when I know I want to fill in, but notice how I leave some open spaces. Right? We want to leave open spaces for our brain to fill things in, don't we? Don't forget those open spaces. Sometimes they're just as important as the filled in spaces. It's amazing how a little open space can make all the difference in the world. Watch me paint out all my open spaces. So don't forget about the translator microbes in Farscape. Kathy Wood, thank you. Translator microbes in Farscape. Actually, right now with COVID, I about any microbes i think we're going to probably end up getting the elon musk neural implant so that they can you know just directly translate it right into our brain and yet M. Voss says how would i put this on an 11 by 14 canvas board so if you check uh are you familiar with the uh community tab in it i'm doing the exact same thing i did on the first side now over on this left embankment if you go over to the community tab i did a blog about it but my basic advice would be to either use the, the rectangle references we gave you on the event page here for this, or to go to the community tab. And also it's on the event page. I put them in both places. I put it everywhere and I put it in a blog on the Art Sherpa website. If you go to the blog, you can find this too. Put it as many places as I could. You can do a circle centered in your 11 by 14 and uh, orient it, I would say, as a landscape, I think is best, but you could do it as a portrait. And then you just frame it like usual. It's a very unusual look and it's really gorgeous and it has kind of a boutique feel about it. I highly recommend it. So, um, Joyce is like, I like that Sherpa brush. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Alina Krauss says, Cinnamon, this new format is so much more visual. John, what do you think of that? They love the new format. I think you guys can see more of this, can't you? Well, I, I think it. It allows you to engage with the community a little more. You can see the chat. You can take a moment to pause. If, there, if we need to bring some focus on something, we can. I, I, I really like that part. I like this moment here in the painting. Oh, this is a good moment. I remember this moment. This is when I was like, this will be okay. I'm taking my uh, cad red and diox purple. This mix is a little bit more purple. I've added a lot of zinc, and I'm just creating little... So these marks, what they really represent in the canvas is bits of decomp on the forest floor. So they leaves and grass and things that are 
um, clumping and falling on the forest floor and nurturing it and feeding the trees. So I really, really like that. Oh, Kelly Strokes, I got my face mask in the mail a few days ago. Everyone loves it as much as I do. It's comfortable and beautiful. If you buy the Art Sherpa face masks, hand wash only. I'm saying yes. that because I didn't read the tag either. And if you put them in the dryer, what you have is a gnome mask. Yes. Garden gnome. Or your pet. <laughs> so do definitely hand wash only. Hang to dry. They shrink. And again, the, the company did put it on the tag and they put it on the thing. But it, who reads the tags? I cut those things right out. So now I'm coming in. Oh, go back. I got to talking about tags. I want to okay. talk about this mix. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I got monologuing like a villain. But now that I know John can back me up, let's go. I'm going to focus on this right here. Public service announcement aside. So I've got to create a brighter area. I'm going to take my phthalo blue. I'm still on my Cambridge, and I'm getting my phthalo green. That means I'm making some turquoise. I'm pulling my titanate yellow into it. A really gorgeous combo of colors. If you did acrylic April, you know how lovely it is. I'm just finding that perfect kind of bright reflection. Now, titanium white, not zinc on this one, creating a light mark. This needs to be a slightly lighter value. And now I'm going to go back and again increase the holes and variance in the reflection, the space coming between the two trees, between the two forests. Let's call them forest guardians, shall we? Do we call them forest guardians? I think they are really, really, really doing quite well. Just coming along, doing the little forest guardians, adding white when I want to make these marks lighter. I'm still doing that short, that short on the toe of the brush, short little scratch, 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 scratch stroke. When you see me do this stuff with my with my brush, I'm repositioning it in my hands for comfort or I'm flipping it. I flip this thing all the time. Sometimes when it looks like I'm flicking it, I'm actually flipping it. It doesn't necessarily show up on camera. Light colors, dark colors, leaving spots, leaving openings, working between the mixes of phthalo blue, phthalo green, titanium yellow, and titanium white. Going back into my forest, making sure that it feels natural, feels like what's going on. And then I'm bringing back that dioxin and a uh, cad red mix, just tapping a few leaves that might have hit the forest floor, breaking up. So it's just really nice. And I'm going to add some highlights uh, up the banks. Uh, I'm using the brush more on, again, it's more perpendicular. Again, when I'm doing those little strokes there where you see me kind of go wiggle, wiggle, stroke, wiggle, wiggle, stroke, I'm using this part of the brush, the side foot of the brush, from about the belly to the toe. That's doing good. A little more of my zinc white. And I'm going to make some mist. So I'm going to just mist up the base of this. I've rinsed out my brush. I don't have a lot of pigment in it. I'm coming back with just pure zinc white. And I'm going to make a little halo of mist. It's going to show up behind the gate. It's a subtle effect. When you view the painting in person, it's pretty awesome. It doesn't necessarily always show up on camera. So when you post it on you know, your Instagram or Facebook, people may not see how awesome you were with your fog, but you were awesome and we know it. Because you'll see it, you can kind of really see it here in the painting where there's just an implication of forest mist coming up. I make little curved strokes, I make little S strokes. They're short, I try to break them up and blend them where I can and create little areas of a more intense white and little areas of more intense green. Look at that going. And then I want to blend it down and be like, under the gate, it's a little bit misty. And then where else can I put this? Oh, let me pick this other places because, again, on the horizontal, wiggle, 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 make that highlight, go, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There I go. Look at it, evaluate it, consider it. <gasps> Carol Nicholas, thank you so much. I, too, love lemons. Let me blow some bubbles for you. Step nine, I have dried the painting. Now I've gotten my Princeton brush. I'm getting a little bit of my yellow and my glazing medium and my zinc white. And I'm going to add the bands of light coming down. The thing that I did here that I don't know really translated is I also squished the brush kind of into more of a fan shape. So it's loaded with paint. And then I kind of squish it in the belly 
and it does splay it out and it helps me make those bands of light. So that's the zinc white, the cad yellow glazing medium to get those trans, translucent bands. And it takes me a minute to really find the space that those work. Um, Sylvia Bohr says, may I ask, where's the best place to ask a question? Not really needing support. Cause you know, I have a few each day. Um, you know, I would say if you need them answered, it's always best to ask support at theartsherpa.com because we have a tracking system there. And so we have some way of knowing how, uh, if things are being answered. Um, if you ask online, it's kind of hit or miss. If we see it, we will answer it. We don't ignore our community. Um, but again, with sheer volume, we miss a lot. Uh, and also here in chat's always okay because even if I don't know the answer, my mods do. I mean, I know the answer. I guess I can see here. But even if I miss it, my mods know it. And a lot, sometimes the community knows that answer too. And also in your patron group is a perfectly good place to ask questions because the group is smaller and so it's easier for us to see. Um, I am continuing. Now I've gotten my tight knit yellow and I'm doing glazing medium and I'm still brushing down. I am using my zinc white to lighten it and a glazing medium to make sure it stays transparent. And the goal is just to create this sort of fan, this fan of light that is pointed here and disperses out. Gives it that uh, theatrical uh, thing. Our home else says, I'm loving this format. And then Leslie Marie Ellis asks a very astute question. Could you use a fan brush for this? Yes. Yes, you could. Excellent way to do it. Excellent. Excellent way to do it. Fan brushes were, during the painting of this, my fan brushes were engaged in another project. <laughs> so look, I may do, look at me infuse this brush. I'm like, it's going to do what I say. I give it, I go, give it the face. I'm like, do what I say, brush. So see that bit there too, what I'm doing? I'm taking that color, that zinc white, those colors, and I'm tapping and I'm edge loading. Edge loading is a very important skill. Edge loading lets you get a small amount of paint into a specific area so you have a little more control over what's happening. And then Emboss says, thank you, Blue. Oh, Amazon. That was, she was just thanking a moderator, Blue. You know, I was noticing we don't need to zoom in quite as much on this format. No, we don't need to zoom in. I think, I think everyone can see this easier. Um, I can certainly see what's happening easier. I am getting, uh, some, sometimes on the downward strokes, I will get a small amount of titanium white for its string, but I will definitely knock it back with some glazing liquid. Remember what that is? That's this stuff. We love this stuff. <laughs> it went from a not particularly known product. Um, PJ Low Piccolo says, can you explain what glazing medium does to the paint? Glazing medium, this one, not every one. Glazing, acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This one thins the color so you can tint a color. You can have a very transparent glaze of color, but this is also what's called a retarder. It is a slow drying agent, so it slows down how fast your paint is drying so you have more mixability. Step 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And I haven't put up paint. Why is that? Because we had to clean everything up because it was getting messy. I am going to now, everything is dry, bone dry and cool. These are very important things if you're going to use the chalk, bone dry and cool. Cured. I'm going to re-sketch in my gate. Um, I had the lines there, but I'm going to put them back in just so that I can see them clearly and I know what I'm doing. I'm going to use my T-square because I'm not going to do a draw straight line without that help. And I'm going to use my Dritz chalk tool because it's a nice precision tool. That again is a Taylor's chalk tool by Dritz. You can get these at Joann's and online. So I'm just using T-square and I'm going to be like, I think my gate should be how high and I'm thinking about it. So I make this line across and then I'm going to, what I'm trying to do is block in, hey, where do I think everything is going to be? And here's the center because the gate has to divide in the center. So I'm just making sure that what I see looks how it's supposed to. And again, you have a traceable and you could transfer the gate using that traceable at this stage very, very easily. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. That is not cheating. That is just an art technique, like me using a chalk tool or T square. Not cheating. It's a tool. Um, all right. <laughs> so, um, uh, Missy Lulu says, yes, I agree. I like seeing this format more, but don't get me wrong. wrong. I love watching cinnamon paint. You totally are. You're totally watching me paint. I am painting. <laughs> And I am live right now. Just think of it as a time lord. Yep. All right. So this is Payne's Gray uh, Fluid by Holbein. You could just use the black paint that you have in your kit. You could get craft paint. I like the fluid. And the reason I like the fluid is it's going to help me get a smooth application that's highly pigmented. And it's going to help me with these fine lines. You can thin the paint you have with water. It just may take a couple more coats. Don't freak out about it. It's okay. I'm taking a number four round, that's this brush right here, and I am loading the paint to the tip of this, and I'm going to very carefully paint in. Here's the thing, the dark colored paint. It is easy to add, hard to remove. So that's why you see me using a smaller brush and proceeding slowly. Because um, this is architectural, and honestly, you could be very fastidious about this and dry each element and use tape and T-squares to make each of these edges very crisp and sharp. I decided that my gate was handmade and artisanal, and so I would not do that. Uh, Cheryl Sussman, my other bottle says acrylic uh, gloss liquid medium. They did change the labeling of these a uh, bit. You can see that there's this is the old label and this is the new label. <laughs> Same product. They just updated and there's still old and new product out there on the market. It's not unusual that you're seeing those changes. Patty Hoffman says she loves the format, John. John say, worked really hard on this. This is probably I one had, of the harder projects he's ever worked on. I had my microphone up because I was drinking coffee. I like this format too. It makes it so you can talk to people easier. Thank you, Patty. Uh, Brent F says, I just got my Sherpa fan and four round in the mail yesterday. And Suki says, that's the brush I'm waiting for. It's supposed to be delivered today. Woo! I just got my new gel, because I don't go nowhere, my new gel nails stuff. So I'll be, I'll be sporting some nails because I feel like I haven't been bringing my nail game like I'm supposed to on the platform. Uh, jin jinxed. I am. Thanks you for teaching me that I can do it. I also have started using my good brushes. No more Crayola brushes. I have those Crayola brushes too. Things to do. I have, they're, in the, they're in the box. They're real pretty though, aren't they? They're very colorful. I wish the good brushes had the joy of makeup brushes or the Crayola brushes and were more playful. I'm still using my number four. Now listen, during this gate, and this is very important, if the brush you have isn't giving you a fine line, get a smaller, more detail-oriented brush. Notice how I turn this around and I'm stop starting at the top. So my trick to doing an arch, if I'm going to kind of freehand it in, is I make a mark at the top that tells me how high it's going to be. I put that mark in the middle, and then I make little sketchy, tentative marks down. I know I can add or take away uh, some masonry if I need to, but that's how I get my arch kind of, whatever gate I'm doing, whatever fantasy thing I'm painting, that's how I'm gonna get it across um, without using an architectural tool. SN News said, we go back to your regular setup when you feel better to stand up because I kind of like that better. I, it, it's prob we'll probably have all formats always. Um, this is a lot physically easier on me for sure. I suspect we'll see a mix of these because there's probably a mix. Different different need for different use. So different needs for different uses, different stuff. Um uh for a little bit we'll be doing this. Don't unsub. <laughs> uh Sally Crook with a lot of consonants in front of it says, Is folk art floating the medium is the same as the glazing medium that we're using? It kind of is. I do. I think it kind of is. It has, I have played with it and it works in a very similar fashion. I would highly recommend it. If you're going to bring out your T-square and measure anything and you can see, yep, I'm right. It's four inches wide is the thing. What I was doing there was making a mark in the middle point and that's going to be the tallest part of my gate. I have sketched 
a part of my gate that's above the ground. Make sure you leave space above the ground for your gate so you can use some of that glow light effect, which was one of my favorite parts of this painting, coming out. Um, Uh, Colleen Mucci says, I really like this format. It allows cinema not to have to do two things at once and can have more time to offer explanations for what she did, how and why after the fact. I think it's going to, I think you can count on us doing a mix. We have a tendency to never take away from our community, but we only add. Mm. Um, is what our general uh, philosophy is. So when I'm, I've got a, my point loaded, I've got my fluid paint. It is, that's why I'm getting these nice lines and I'm pulling downward. I get a straighter line pulling down. You want to make sure that the two side lines are shorter than your center line. Because the gate kind of has a little wrought iron arch coming down. And look, you can follow along exactly to my wrought iron. You could do imagination wrought iron. It really, it's your gate, it's your garden. You can do it any way you want. I'm adding a little bit of a, a flourish at the top. And I, I feel like I like, it's kind of like a little Encantha coming out, and I like it quite a lot. You can see them. Ooh, filigree bits, fussy mm. bits. I Suki, love my fussy bits. Suki's going to have to be careful with that tube squeezer she found. Ooh. Yeah, it's a, it, it really quickly can turn your paint tube into a fire hose. <laughs> it really does. But it works very well. Um, Leslie Marie Ellis says, I find that if I'm doing something symmetrical that I have to turn my canvas, is this just me? It is not just you. And that is a very good strategy to fixing that. So here we are at step 12. We have put in the base of our gate. This is the base architecture. And I'm going to continue on and make even division marks along the gate. Um, you can see they're just little marks that I could change my mind about if I didn't feel. And I'm just trying to space them approximately uh, the same bit apart. You can use many architectural tools to get very precision about this. I did not feel like doing that. Um, Jenny K, I wanted to join your patron, and I don't know how I looked on Patreon site, and I could not find you because I'm not on Patreon. Mm -hmm. I have a patronage that is through my website. Yes. And it, we have that through there because it allows us to do a lot extra stuff that we couldn't necessarily do through Patreon. So you would just go to theartsherpa.com and you would click the patron tab at the top. It would take you to the patron levels. Pick the level with the stuff that looks like the most fun to you. You know, if you're not sure, start at the $5 level because that, that gives you a lot of, like more than anybody else's by far. Oh, yeah. For $5. It's a ridiculous amount of extra. And it's not stuff I do on the channel. I don't take away from the community that I have on YouTube. This is new, weird, and different stuff. New, weird, and different things. I would say that's accurate. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, we, we do tend to mix it up with other interesting and weird stuff over there. My, my coffee just splashed back at me. <laughs> off the lid. Um, uh, Lorraine says, I hope you feel better soon. I am feeling okay. I'm just making sure I am okay, and I am listening to medical advice. Is that smart to do, right? Listen to doctors is yeah. a smart thing. I have done it my whole life. You know, while still being an advocate for my own health, it's that balance. So I'm adding that little um, wrought iron center there, the little decorative center, and I'm just kind of freehanding that in. I'm doing that on the tip. And I'm gonna add the little curls underneath. I think with the wrought iron, it's just fun to add curls and elements and anything that pleases you. Uh, Linda Sue, for me, my hand trevor says she'll be using a pen liner for these little things. Uh, and then Casey Mixed Media says, thumbs up for this format. I think that this solves um, a need uh, for a lot of people. And also I know for many people, being able to see me talk allows them to, with closed captioning, understand better what's going on in the video. Mm. Um, it, you know, for those that are hard of hearing uh, in our, not you know, hard of hearing. <laughs> I, I had a friend explain to me, there is no lip reading, um, which was really good to know because I think TV confuses you about that, doesn't it? It does. It, I thought it, that was a superpower people had, like Daredevil. No, apparently not. Um, but being able to see somebody's mouth, especially if you're hard of hearing, where you're catching some sound and you're trying to extrapolate can help. It and helps. So we know yeah. that this is very helpful. 
uh, when you have that. And then I think it, it probably also help, helps with the closed captioning. So I'm making little circles. I'm gonna try to put them all at the same height on the gate. I'm still on the toe of the brush. This is still the number four round. This is still the number four round. I'm still on the toe. Uh, patrons have birdie, says Patty Hoffman. That is true. Patrons do get birdie. Patrons get birdie. Birdie is precocious. Birdie, birdie isn't always dressed enough to be approved in the main Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes she's a patron only group level of dress. That's just pretty funny. Oh, uh, this format makes it more personal, says Jen K. I think that's I think that's true. I think this is more personal. So now what I'm adding there is the uh, this would be the handle of the gate, and so you want to make sure that you put it just across, and then notice it kind of lines up with the little bumpies. And I'm gonna really think hard here about this curly cue because it's an event for me. And then I'm gonna go no. I need to make this line. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for areas of the gate that are more manageable. When you have a big visual project, what I highly recommend is breaking it down into smaller bites, right? Like Shel Silverstein told us in the sidewalk ends, you know, how to eat a whale mm -hmm. one bite at a time. This is a whale you want to eat at the smallest possible bites at a time that you can. Um, I can get a little lost in complex patterns, and so what I find is breaking things down helps me. Now, since the gate is arcing down, one of the things that I can do is sort of pay attention to the length of the pipes that are coming up, the support beams, and then build what I've got going from there. And you can see I just, it's okay to pause. Like, you can think about a stroke before you begin the brush stroke. That's all right to do. Uh, when we're not doing this format, I tend to kind of power through, but this is really nice because you can see me take a minute and think about what I'm doing there yeah. and how I'm doing it. And you can see that there's lots of little filigrees, lots of little moments happening there, and I'm having a lot of fun. This is the overarching kind of the beginning of the overarching top middle bar mm. to the right-hand side. UPS is late, grrr, and Desiree Whittington says, oh, no, circles. And then uh, Lynn is telling everyone, oh, there was a R2-D2 humidifier, tabletop humidifier online last night that we all found. Mm -hmm. uh, Linda Sue says, I followed several instructors, and most of them would be speed painting through the section. This format allows you to see it real time while she answers questions. That is exactly true. You do have to sit with me for a minute on my lessons, but you do come out knowing what you need to do. And remember, these are recorded and available for replay anytime. So you can make your own. If you, there's an area you don't need to see everything I do, speed me up. Yeah. Speed me up. So I'm making uh, some extra little div dividing support elements, kind of trying to keep that going on the gate. I kind of like that. So once you do one, you got to kind of do them all. Just some symmetry, but it's not required because, like, on the left-hand side, I was less symmetrical. It was okay. So. Silver Sky Cloud says, better late than never or rushed and damaged. Yes, let's all hope it comes in in perfect, perfect condition. I'm going to come in and finish the last flourishes on the gate. Um, I'm putting a, a similar kind of little finial top there. It was a busy, long time bit of kit, wasn't it? Hmm. We're doing the gate for a while. It had a lot going on. It had remember a little bit going. You could going. do this in Posca pens and stuff. You could stencil in a gate that you found that you liked. I don't have to use my gate. This is, you got a little, this is, this, it's actually doing pretty good here. This is, you're, you're uh, almost an hour into this one. And it's, yeah, it wasn't that long. No. I think if I had done this live, just because of the way we stop and start and the way things go, I think it might have been longer. Um, I think John has a guesstimation of how long the, the painting time part of the video was. Like, not that bad. Oh, no, he told me exactly. It was two hours and seven minutes. Two hours and seven minutes? Yeah. Pretty good. And I think we'll probably be done 2.20, 2.20 with this, with the extra talking, maybe 2.30. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. So, not particularly long for a painting that involved. <laughs> nope. We're kind of cooking. And you know, it's so funny. It like feels like it takes a while until you paint with it live. And then you're like, this is going too fast. Um, uh, Liz Carson says, only problem with this format is there's no intermission. Some of us need to go to the bathroom. 
Well, we can we, fix that. We that's can. That's a very good. That's a good bit of feedback. Well, I'll tell you what. If you would like, after this, after this step, I think maybe here, this step or the next step, you can take a. Well, we have a little. Uh, yeah. A little break. We'll take an intermission there. That is a very good idea because I do think it's important to stand up, to stretch, to go to the restroom, to have a break, to respect your body. So when we get to the end of this, we'll do an intermission. Liz, that was a very good suggestion. Cindy M wants to know what color I'm using for the gate. This is Holbein Fluid Haynes Gray. You could use black. You could use craft paint. You could use a golden fluid paint. They make a Payne's gray too, and you can get it at Michael's really easily. So there's lots of options there, or you could just thin the paint you have. Uh, Alyssa Oster, I love that you're still thinking in CST. Because <laughs> the clock won't change. And if I try to change the clock, it breaks everything on my computer. Uh, that's just the truth. Christine Cole, I'm going to meet and greet with Alaskan watercolor artist today, Barbara Lavelle. I'm so excited. My daughter is also excited. She's going to be the first ar artist she's ever going to meet. My mom, when I was a girl, used to take me to tons of watercolor workshops, the Watercolor Society, an amazing organization with tons of educational resources. Um, and I think that that was really uh, probably one of the most helpful parts of my art development was getting to do that. So congrats on you taking your daughter. It will be a uh, kind of important moment. Uh, Patty Brooke, this looks awesome. I'm so happy to catch you. Brock, Patty Brock, I'm so happy to catch you too, Patty. We're about to do an intermission when the gate comes to an end. Um, we'll do an intermission because it was brought up that we should do bio breaks and health and restorative moments. I think that that's going to be super it's, happy. In about 10 minutes, I think it was. When we're, because you, you you get through all of the gate and do all of the... I get through the, all the gate? Do I do the vines and the bird and everything? Yes, but you oh, don't you go in any color. Oh, you guys here for a minute. There's a vines and bird. It's about 10 minutes. Okay. I think if I had to guess from here. All right. Well, that's as long as you know that the countdown is coming. Yeah. It's the final countdown. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. I'm, am I paused? Oh, I'm just thinking. You love when I'm thinking so hard, I look paused. Yep, it totally <laughs> messes with me in the edit because I'm like, did it break? Did it? Okay, there you are. Did it break? No, okay, there you are. <laughs> Desiree Whittington says she's so excited for the retreat. Retreat. I'm the first artist she's going to get to meet. I'm excited for the retreat too, Desiree, and I'm excited to meet you. <sighs> I wish there wasn't so much. Oh, th that was the break, right? Nope. Well, let's let's do it here. Well. Oh, you want to do it here? Yeah, and then we'll finish the uh, we'll finish when we get back. I can make some more coffee, and we'll finish when we get back. Let's see if we can go backwards to the. Yeah, and we'll we'll do the break there at that stage. We're gonna go back to the third. No, 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 oh. no! You're you're erasing me. Where did you finish it? There. We're step thirteen. Let's go step thirteen and break. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. We gotta find the. It's in here somewhere. He's got to find it. Maybe we don't. Maybe we have to go forward. That's Maybe okay. This, was it's too here. Much. this is where we're at. This it is where you were thinking. It was too much to go forward. We reached too high. We flew too close to the sun, Icarus. And our feathers have melted. Oh, we, we can. This is a good place right here if you is want to. Is that an okay place? Yeah. This we're going to give you guys you an started. animation break. We're going to come right back. We're going to finish this painting. It is important to take breaks when you're doing this type of work because your creative brain has no sense of time and your body will forget to tell you that you're hurting. This is a good thing to do. So stand up, assess, stretch, get a snack, and enjoy the fishies. Let's see if I can get some fishy, use. Fishy, I'm going to get some fishy, audio. Fishy. Let's fishy, see if I fishy, can. Fishy, fishy, fishy. It should say, like, the Art Stripper will be right back and transparent. Oh, you know what? It should say something like that. I had thought I had a, a little break fishy. thing. This you is know an what? art show with fish. My bro. Art show with fish. Wait, wait. Like you, a fish. If you, could, if you could make some fish noise at them for just two seconds i can like bloop, make a bloop, we'll be right back bloop, thing bloop, 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 shark week bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a call back to a previous time oh i could blow bubbles so the fish know that there are bubbles you found a little we'll be right back well, let's yeah, see if i definitely can... take this time if you're painting along to bio break to stretch if you're watching the replay <gasps> this is a gentle reminder comes take care of your physical health as well as your creative and mental health while you're painting we'll see you in shall we make it two minutes no uh, just a, well soon 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 all right
So, here we go. We're starting to come back now. Cinnamon's getting settled in. Getting everything ready to go. Looking at the fishes. The fishies. Seeing everybody out here. It's really nice to see you guys. Get to hang out. Do a little Saturday afternoon stuff. But just having some mellow time. Kind of enjoy it. I think Cinnamon got her fresh coffee together. So I can see her gathering together, preparing for her readiness. Do you think you're you're getting closer to ready? I'm closer to ready. You're closer to ready? Mm-hmm. We can bring you back in. <laughs> R2. You could... We're about halfway through. We're, are we close, about halfway through? We're a little over halfway. A little over. All right. We lost a few people for the intermission, but hopefully it's because they got up and logged off and they're doing some self-care and we're going to finish this gate. Mm -hmm. You guys ready to finish the gate? We're still right. using, this is the Payne's Gray Fluid Acrylic Step 13 and the number four round brush. We're working the toe with a very gentle pressure. If you're trying to get a finer line, uh, what you want to do is lighten the pressure and you want to make sure that your brush has a very sharp point. That really is what's going to get you through the most. Uh, I love this. Art Thomas, this is beautiful. Thank you, Art. It get, actually really comes together. Um, shark stuff on the National Geographic channel. I love our little fishy video, i got to be honest. So I'm bringing some little vines down. And one of the things, whenever you're painting a kind of, uh, like, in the forest, discovered, in some state of... Uh, uh, integration into the landscape. You want to kind of include some vines and some things hanging down. The thing about vines is to remember that you want them to vary. You don't want to have a uniform line of vines. You don't want to have the exact same thing every time. You want some short and you want some long. So that's what you see me doing here is carrying them on long and short. I'm still working everything uh, Payne's Gray. And the reason I chose Payne's Gray is I'm going to add highlights to that. But there's some very strong uh, backlighting to this gate, so the gate would be in a very big silhouette. It's just what it would have going on. And so I wanted to make sure that I captured that to some degree. So you could feel that, and also it gave me an excuse to do that really cool reflection under the gate. Uh, Cheryl Sussman, I love the ocean fish video. That's fantastic. And Brenna says, thanks for the intermission. Charlotte Cantwell says, this is my first time looking live. I paint with cinnamon nearly every weekend since March. And it's been a treat. Thank you. Thank you for painting with us. We really, really appreciate it. We, we wouldn't be a channel without you guys. And honestly, uh, as more people come on the platform every day and it gets more challenging, honestly, to get your content out, I so appreciate the support that our core community gives us and keeps us going, um, regardless of whatever viral video or not viral video we have going on. We always have family and community in our fam, and it means a lot to us. Uh, Misty Willow says, blessings your way with all you do. Uh, for us, I wish for more blessings my way. I'm 55, and I lost two sons over this time. You've kept me feeling like life is okay. Please take care of you. Well, first, I want to say I'm really sorry for your loss. That is, I can't imagine I'm a mom, and I'm just sending you light and love and hugs, and I'm glad that art can help in any way. Um, remember that it is just one part of uh, self-care and well-being. And if you need any other help, it's always okay to ask for help for those around you anytime that you need it for any reason. So what you see me doing here is I'm putting in my little touch leaves. These are just like the big green leaves we did earlier. They're just like little touches on the toe of my number four round. I just go touch pull. It's a touch pull. And then I'm putting in my little bird. Here's my bird strategy. I put in my legs first because if I don't put in my legs first, my bird will get big and he'll be, he'll be nesting, not perching. That's what happens. If you don't put in your legs first, you've got a, a nesting bird, not a perching bird. So still on my number four round. And uh, still kind of just keeping that going and making sure, make sure you separate the tail feathers from the wing feathers. Uh, Callie Beasley says, I really struggle not to make patterns. If it helps, 
that is a struggle for everyone. That is one of the artistic struggles is to find uh, that space to free ourselves from patterns when doing naturalistic work and then knowing when to use patterns to pull focus or create an element in. I'm going to continue to drape lots of little vines and leaves and things that say that this gate has been part of this world for a long time. It's an ancient gate. It's a really great way to convey ancient gate in our um, uh, wonderful painting. And then somebody said, Leslie and Marie Ellis says, a round canvas would be lovely for the green door painting. If you buy the rounds and you love this, as I love this, especially painting on the Lazy Susan, which is amazing. Anytime you want to do a round painting, you just take one of our references that we provide you and then crop it out just the circle, and there you go. So it's always really doable. You can go either way. You can make these uh, horizontal very easily, your portrait. You can make other pictures around very easily. Irwa says, wait, this is pre-recorded. <laughs> and then Irwa goes, wait, no, this is live. So what this is, is that I've got to be doing uh, work at a table for a little period of time. And uh, this was the way that we could do that. So the lesson part of that, the part that you're seeing was pre-done, but we are streaming out live and I am teaching it live, if that makes sense. I am doing touch strokes through here, uh, creating little leaves, and I am winding down what will be uh, a really lovely set of kind of branches, in just different wild elements. If you're trying to build things, make sure to do different textures. If you can see, I'm kind of doing a, a tree branch out here where I'm, I'm adding that to the vine texture. The tree is a separate plant element from the vine texture. So you want to definitely separate these things up. Uh, great. J, uh, PJ Lopicola says, who wants a secret garden at their house? And Desiree Winnington says, hobbit door on a round canvas. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, Tiffany Binder wants to know what size this canvas is. So Tiffany, it is a 12 by 12 round. Um, you could do it on any size round. And if you need any more material information, it is listed in the description below. Also, uh, we burned in the materials in a card at the beginning of the video so when you rewatch, you can find that there easily as well including some ideas about round canvases that you might not have thought of which are also on the community tab in the blog so making sure that i have some symmetry i'm going to bend that vine down remember to hang some of these vines down you can vine differently than i vined you can add more vines you can have less vines if you find the vine is the space of the painting where you're really finding your calm and your center, then do all the vines that you need to do to find your space that feels safe and okay. So, I really like that. Uh, do you think I would be able to do this on an A5 page? I'm worried it might get too cramped. I think if you had sharp, Brushes, smaller brushes, you could do it very well as long as you could see it. I feel I could do this painting fairly well to a six by six round, so I think you would be okay. Like if I'm just looking at like, could I do it? As long as my brushes were sharp and detailed, I could probably take it to a six by six without really feeling the strain. Oh, here we are. We're at the halfway point of the video. Wait, come on. Sorry, I had the raw, I was controlling the fishes. So we're, we're going to do that again. Doing it again. Sounds going to catch it and then pause it. I'm drying. Always dry before you go to the next step. Dry, 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 especially the black paint. It will drag everywhere oh, all over your canvas. Let me go back up. And you don't want it to drag. You really don't. I thought I gave you a... Was it before that? It was before that. It was between step 13 and before step 14. I don't know where it went. Before, 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 before. There's the end. I don't know. It's I've okay. You guys it. can wait for two seconds on the replay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's real hard to have like a single frame control. It is a little hard to have that. And again, this is live. Like, yes, I did this work previously, but our video here is live. So we have live technical challenges. It happens. Um, Tiffany says, thank you so much. You've got me through so much over the years. You're so appreciated. Thank you, Tiffany. You are appreciated too. 
And then Carol T said, pet hoodies? Yes, there it pause. Is. Okay, huge news. And also, moderator Cad Blue, don't freak out. Zip hoodies. I have them. They're in the collection. We, and I did the matching leggings. We have pet hoodies now. So that's what that one is there. It comes in a few colors. That's the cup we've got. We've got a shirt. I've got a coat. I've got a mask so you can match. So basically, I've got a whole outfit set up and a shirt. If you use the code at your discount, TAS15, you can get 15% off whatever your Teespring order is from my store. I have, I don't know, hundreds of crazy weird items. Lots of fun stuff like my mug here. Painting with my gnomies, draw gnome evil, paint gnome evil, craft gnome evil. Mm -hmm. With the all, you can't see him because he's invisible. With the painting with my gnomies graphic on the other side. These are just over on the Teespring store. This is our, you know, in the middle of the video plug, we figure you've been here for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to hit everybody at the, but you've been here for an hour. So if you wanted to know, that's what that was. All right. Thank you for putting up with us. Uh, Diane Canup, Sally Late, making frames for drawings. Well, it's always good to make frames for drawings. And honestly, if you can, uh, if you have the ability to make your own frames, it's a fabulous thing to do. I am putting out Doc's Purple, and I am putting out Cad Red, and I am putting out Fluid White. I'm making sure my surface is dry so that I don't drag. And I will drag paint all over the place. I'm also putting out some of my Titan Yellow. Mm. I'm going to grab my Cad Red and my Docs Purple loaded on the toe of my number four brush, my number four round that we've been working. And I'm going to create a highlight colors because we need to uh, add some dimensionality to the leaves. We're going to go over uh, areas where we feel like light would be catching it. So I'm adding a little highlight to the bird with this color. And it's subtle. It's the, it is cad red and dox purple. It's a subtle, subtle thing, but it's gorgeous on the canvas. Um, Erwa, do you keep the digital reference images yourself? I'm talking about the magical book and the orange to toadstool paintings. Yeah, and often I put those into the pages where you guys are working them so you can see what my original concept was mm. and work from that. I have this too. The original digital is there. So you guys have access to that to paint from and see what decisions I made and what decisions you want to make. So I'm highlighting the inside of the vines. Um, this is the first level. I'm going to need to bring it up one or two more values. That's how the vines really pop. But these are stages. This is the darkest of the highlights. And then I'm going to put there. It's nice and visible to the eye, but it's not quite enough contrast to really pop the way we're going to need it. However, this work needs to be done. And this is where we start to show the vines. See, I'm painting the vine now over the gate, creating a layered effect. Uh, Trudy Powell, John, we need to zoom in so we can see the details. Okay, we can do that a little bit. Guess what? We can do that. Let's see here. John can do that. I do. It's hard this. to catch up with me, though, because I'm so fast. And then we do. But he will try to give that a go. We'll all, like, zoom. cross our fingers that it doesn't get too crazy. So I've added a little tight knit yellow. When I add the tight knit yellow, that's where I'm trying to add a little bit more of the spotted sunlight. Um, I can lighten that hue um, with uh, a little bit of my fluid white. But the trick about this is, is trying to make this gate feel rustic, to feel stone, and to feel like just a bit of light. So it's not just a, a black silhouette, which everybody does. It is um, more of what you might expect on... Um, on kind of like a real object in a real space. Uh, Mary uh, Youngblood, I would love to see kitty clothes, but I don't know how I would ever get Peter to wear them. I, I, I would love to see kitty clothes too, but cats will totally take revenge on all of us. So I think we can zoom out now. I think this is a little much on it, but you guys get a sense of what we're doing. I think we can zoom out a little bit. Maybe where we can just see the gate. Because I'm not sure the resolution is that yeah, no, we're okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So just catching the inside vines. And how, this is where you say to the viewer, this vine is on top of this vine. So whenever you have two vines that cross, the line that has the con 
continuous highlight, that's the line that's on top. I'm adding the cad red and diox, mix stronger to a cad red to add a few deep dark leaves that are again over the gate and a few places. That's also how I put the lines that are wrapping over the top of the gate, over the top of the gate, where you can see that that's what they're doing. Ah, I am loving it. So, you know, um, I'm now getting into my Naples, uh, not my Naples, well, it's Naples Yellow Light or Titan It Yellow. They're really essentially the same color. The Titan It Yellow, Y53. And I'm making some very bright highlights. And this is, you know, the, the brightest, this is the strongest contrast. This is the brightest of the highlight that's hitting the edge of the gate. It's going to hit some of the vines. It'll hit some of the wrought iron. And it's where this object will really start to stand out and pop, like you see in the reference photo he here. 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 <laughs> you can kind of see I'm doing that. And this is where I continue, like, by taking that highlight and putting it in the art, and then putting the vines back down with their darker uh, red and dox color, you can see that we uh, started to create space, didn't we? We created mm -hmm. the depth of the objects that are here. That's already in it. Now I'm going to take a little of my uh, tightening yellow and a little of my fluid white. Again, that is this white, fluid white. And I'm going to add just a few pops of highlights a couple places just to sit there and say that the gate is also impacted. The gate will have the strongest, uh, deepest silhouette because the light source is directly coming uh, through that. It's an interesting light source. It's probably a magical fairy. To be really honest, it's probably a magical fairy. Lighten up the gate. Uh, so, uh, oh, uh, Desiree, I'm brand new to painting. This is amazing. I'm so hooked. <laughs> painting is really fun. It never gets boring. It never gets old. It's always uh, very helpful to my space, my mental health, and my well-being. I really love painting. I am very glad to have had it my whole life. So glad we can share it with other people who might love it as well. You can see I'm adding the mix of the red onto the gate. It just kind of helps create that rust feel. And you can see how strong that color really is there, can't you? Yeah, it's toned a little bit, but it looks fantastic. It's exactly what is needed. Look at that. And then I can tone back any of the highlights that are too bright or too overwhelming for the painting. Uh, so, oh, Barbara YB says, I give this format an A plus, 10, 10, a golden star. Really love your tutorials and appreciate all that you do. Thank you both. I think that's very good. So I'm just adding little highlights up in the leaves. It's good to add some dimensionality to the leaves. I'm going to continue to refine the leaves, refine the vines, especially the vines twisting around the gate. That's going to be like those highlights that really matter because that's, can you see how by making that highlight cross over one vine, we twist that vine in front. And then I can even highlight a couple leaves that might have been catching a little bit of the light coming through the gate and reflecting on them, even though they're quite a dark vine, right? So, and there are vines in a deep purple. If you garden, there's a lot of vine growing plants and ground covers that are like that. And they're little wanderers and they're wonderful. Cindy M, like the new format, Miss John zooming in. Yes. So he's got a bit of a zoom here. Uh, and so we're going to try to, you know, here's what I want to say about this. Do not hold your feedback back. Tell us what the experience is because this, the lessons, they matter for you as well. And it's very important that you enjoy. You might want to zoom out for this. So what I've done here is I've taken my glazing medium. This is my acrylic glazing liquid gloss. And I have thinned the paint, the Payne's gray paint. And I'm going to begin the shadows coming out from the gate. The gate shadows are going to come towards me, and as they come towards me, they're going to go in a sort of fan perspective. So they'll be converging at the gate and coming out open here. And so I'm going to paint those basic lines in, just sketching them in and saying, how do I want this to be? That first line was a little strong. 
I'm coming back with a damp brush and making sure that the beginnings of my shadows don't touch the gate because if they touch the gate, that means the gate is on the ground. If you want the gate to be over the ground a little bit above it, you have to break between the gate and the shadow. I am getting my other paint out. And Cindy M says, thanks for zooming in. And Art Thomas's question, is there a way that I can synchronize Cinnamon's audio? It's off several seconds. Does anybody have audio that's off as well? If you're having that problem, oftentimes refreshing your video will help. Oh, so it's not us? No. Oh, okay. Refresh your video. Or just refresh your, your page. Refresh your video. Um, so these are just looking really good. Now what I'm doing is I'm mixing my background color. Got my phthalo green, a little bit of my tight knit yellow. I'm grabbing uh, my glazing medium and I'm going to come between the dark bands and create highlights. I'm going to do this several times. I'm going to, I, I think it's easier to build up rather than subtract. So sometimes you'll see me move forward on a glaze, uh, working something uh, more incrementally than coming at it in a really intense way. And that's because, it's, again, it's easy to change your mind on something that's fairly transparent and sometimes harder if it's very opaque and very intense um, of this. Uh, did you see there's a new secret garden coming out? This reminds me of the magical gate. This is Jen Lee. It reminds me of the magical gate, too. I love the secret garden. I read that about a thousand times as a kid. It's really mm -hmm. fantastic. I'm taking my zinc white, a little of my fluid white, some of my glazing medium where necessary, and again, really trying to make this, the light reflection as important as the gate's dark reflection. Because I want to be able to pull these all the way forward, and I want them to feel like they're diffusing as they come forward. So it's just... A little bit of an incremental process. Typing in the letters of the product she shows. And if you need to know the, the um, products that I show, always check the description below. You can check the website to the event page. And at the beginning of the video, we have an info card. So we do try to make sure that you guys have that info. Also, we never mind telling you what's in there. So I'm pulling this forward. You can see now I'm taking these reflections long. Now that I've got a sense of their trajectory, the way that they are splaying out, I can go along using the zinc, using the tiny yellow, just a smidge of green. These are bright, bright marks. Getting into my fluid white, just a little more opacity, and coming under the gate, right? Coming under the gate, make sure that that halo looks really, really good too. And it might be nice to kind of feather it forward a bit. Don't forget to feather it forward. You can also use a fan brush here. Uh, to make that first run of radial light out very nicely. Mm. So there's a lot of tools that'll get you there. I'm coming back with a little bit of my shadow color, making sure that my shadows and my highlights work well together. It's okay to refine things. And if you look at something and you're like, I feel like it's off, I feel like you can go back and change it. It's never a problem. That works as art. Uh, KC Mixed Media says, you sound different with this mic. Not as clear. Not as expensive a mic. <laughs> expensive one broke right before the show. Just like moments before the show. Like, seriously, I'm like, John, what's... I put out Quinacridone Magenta. Um, I'm putting out Cad Yellow and Burnt Sienna. And painting is completely dry. Completely. And I'm using my chalk tool. And I pre-draw in the trees. And the reason I do this is so that when I paint in the ferns, and I paint in the rest of the foliage, I know where there's a big honking tree. But sometimes we paint out some of the lovely work we did. Like I painted out some of the lovely foliage leaf work I did with my, uh, with my bush. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that, but that's sometimes you want to go in and pre-sketch out so you know where things are, so you don't do that as much. For this, I don't feel like I would have had the fluid continuity through the leaf motion without it, but, you know. A lot of strategies work. Uh, Brenna F says, thanks for letting us know when we can also effectively use our fan brushes. I love fans brushes. Uh, Peggy Smith says, the zoom in lets us see the painting being applied and how the brush is working. So thanks for the zooming and the pee break. <laughs> Good feedback. Again, always tell us what you like about the videos. Um, 
We can't always, always necessarily take action on every idea, but that doesn't mean every idea isn't good. Like sometimes we just have technical challenges, like my really good mic broke. It How's the mic from the crowdfunder? It's okay. I get, I, we, I, I will work on getting us I think I feel one. kind of fond of it is what it is. It's probably repairable, right? Uh, that doesn't sound, that's not your, uh, of yeah, no, it is. Probably not. That's your, I don't want to tell you how bad it is because I don't want to see a reaction on it's, the show face. <laughs> just get a new one at this point. I think we have to just replace it. Uh, Shaw1305 says, live stream gremlins are rude. Sometimes. Sometimes they're funny. It really depends on the gremlin. Mm hmm Sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're rude. Sometimes they're super destructive. Like Spike. Really, they have a lot of they have a lot of personalities. They're very rarely cute and fuzzy, though. <laughs> very rarely. Ah, oh, gremlins! They happen. They're they're like a thing. Oh goodness! So I am going in and I'm mixing. I've got a little bit of my cad red and a little bit of my Quinn magenta, and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna think. I'm like mm, Quinn, Quinn, Quinn. I'm going to get dots in a minute, I know me, but what we're doing is we're beginning the distant red ferns. You might want to zoom in for some of the ferns uh, yeah. when we're doing them, especially during the highlight. These are, basically, you're going to make your curved stroke, and then you're going to make little short strokes coming in, and you want them to be widest at the base and taper to the tip. That's how you're going to do the fern. Uh, Angela Kirkland, when you are filming, it would be great to show your brush when you start or when you change out. That is a good idea. I can start doing that. That is absolutely doable. Again, this is the number four round. I'm going to bring some ferns in front of the gate. Uh, layering objects like this creates spatial uh, atmosphere in a painting, and so it's nice. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you make some of your fronds big and some of your fronds small. They're going to really pop over the green, and we're not really going to see or feel them until we highlight. In this painting, it's the highlighting stage that lets us first see the object, and then we come back and put our deepest shadows in. They really get revealed and pop. So that's how we're going to build this space up. I am striking out a uh, little bit here, little tiny ferns. I'm on the toe of the brush, brushing out just, just on the toe, just like, Toe, 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 toe. So on the tippy, tippy toe, I'm not pressing very hard. It's a very light stroke. It's hardest at the beginning and releases at the end. That's how you get that taper. Uh, Olivia Power says, OMG, tuned in at the start, then had to cook dinner. Wow, it's beautiful, Simon. I like this format with you able to chat and tutor. I do too. I really like this. I feel like it's helpful. Um, Cheryl Sussman says, I'm having a hard time seeing your chalk marks. Cheryl, I had a hard time seeing my chalk marks. They were very light on this canvas. You can see it there. It's a very light chalk. Um, the thing that's really important is that you can see your chalk mark in that you know that you can chalk your tree and elements of your tree to uh, see where you're going to be. I'm nice. down here. I've turned. So what's nice about the Lazy Susan is that I can turn the canvas instead of turn my body. I think one of the things that happens as a painter is sometimes we contort ourselves to fit the needs of the canvas. I see students do it all the time. Instead of contort the canvas to fit our needs. Uh, when are your, okay, so. <sighs> the gremlins just like the attention. This is Donna Clemens. I agree. Again, burns in front of the gate. Burn it up in front of the gate. We're here ferning for a while. There's lots of grass and ferns. I don't, I, that's what I can tell you. There's lots of grass and ferns. The painting is a three hoot. Sweet sugar cube. Is this going to be the new format all the time? I think you can count on seeing it sometimes, sweet sugar cube, uh, for a little bit for sure, because I've got to be sitting down. This mix was my phthalo blue, phthalo blue. My paint's gray, and I'm mixing much more to the blue, and I added just a bit, bit of zinc white. This is going to be the base of my rock. Um, 
and making little rock shapes that are a little hard to see here. But what you want to do is give space for your rocks to come forward and have breaks and be irregular. You want their, your rocks to feel wild as well. They're rolling stone. Uh, so there we go. And if you guys need more information about at least the last two and the next one, uh, the patron group will have um, PDFs, step-by-steps of these with pictures. These two will be out in the next few days. So I'm bringing this up. I'm making kind of a tall pillar rock. That was an interesting one to paint. These, you know, they happen every once in a while. I don't know if you've ever seen those like very pillar kind of pushed up out of the earth rock. I want to make sure that the back of it's darker than the front of it because the back of it would have less light on it than the front. And I am painting out. Now the ferns are peeking out from behind my rock. I'm going to paint a little more white on the front just to show that there's some highlights and then make sure that things are dark. And coming forward, you're going to see me place a couple more rocks in that space. But now that one's filled in. So this is that, that sort of tall rock you see in the reference here. If I can get to it, doing this stuff right here, getting this guy right now, getting right there. That's this guy. So he's dark blue and Payne's gray. And I just want to paint him forward. He's kind of a low coming forward rock. KC Mixed Media, can you do a, paint, a painting with fan brushes only? I still don't get it. I can, Casey Mixed Media. That's a very good suggestion. And if you haven't seen the video, I did an hour long fan centric only fans all about fan brushes video. Maybe the moderators, if they can find it, can drop it in the chat. Uh, Mary Youngblood, what makes a three hoot as opposed to a two hoot? Um, when the techniques uh, become very involved, when there's a lot more drawing or skills in that area, when there's going to be layers, if the painting is going to be over two hours, right? Like if it's going to be over two hour, hours, we got to call it a three hoop. Um, it's still a tutorial. It's still focused at that learning stage, but it is requiring a lot more. I'm taking my Cad Red, my Quinn, and my Naples Yellow, and some of my fluid white, and I'm now coming on the tip of my brush. You can see me getting some fluid white there, and I'm going to brush in in a similar stroke, just the edge of my ferns, show that they're highlighted in some kind of forest diffused lighting right so now the ferns the structure of the ferns are showing more we were doing that same stroke before but you couldn't really see it because of the de deep value against the deep value but it's in the contrast that we begin to see the object so it's in these in these crazy crazy bits yeah so when the paintings are really long or if it's a weird thing like it's on a round canvas or some big canvas or if there's just a lot of extra challenges that you might have to go shopping or block more time, I try to raise the hoot level so people kind of know what they're getting into. Friday nights, though, are one hoot. One hoot. Easy peasy, easy peasy. Flame Gremlin says, howdy, Cinnamon. Howdy, Flame. How are you doing? I hope you are being safe and you and the kids are doing great. It has been a while since we've seen you. Everybody shout out some love to Flame. That's an icon I miss. I'm so glad you didn't change it. Um, Stephanie Barlow, hey, fishing today, popping in for hello while I have service. Stephanie is kind of cool. <laughs> fishing and also watching your show. Fishing and watching. Because she's got service. I don't even have service in my house. <laughs> hmm. I'm continuing on, again, this is the Quinn, the Cad, the Naples Yellow, and the White making highlights. Sometimes it's just the Quinn and White, but what we're trying to do is just create a little highlight sense here. Donna Clemens says, I love the style of fantasy paintings. They're my favorite. Oh, good news. <laughs> There's a bunch of designs that I finished digitally that I'm working on now that are just like nothing that's out there. If you like the book stairs, that's, that's coming back in a new visited way. And then um, I've got some incredible more gardens at night. And I also have a new fantasy that I've never told before on the show here that you guys are going to go crazy for. So now I've taken my Payne's gray, my phthalo blue, and my fluid white. And what I'm doing is I'm doing little, these are little marks, right? I'm making little furtive marks. And I'm coming along the edges of my stone. 
and where the light would be catching it, like the forward faces of the rock, right? Imagine, be a stone, be a stone with me. The forward faces of the rock. So if it's flat or the light can get to it or it's close to the light, you're going to want to give that a highlight. So you can really see where I chose to highlight. It was just a few places. And we're going to build this up. I'm basically going to want to use three values, right? Minimum, I'm going to want a deep value, a middle value, and a light value at the very minimum or if I can. So, um, Casey McSmedia, can you sit at the easel with the palette vertical and rest in a comfy chair with the supportive back? I suppose I could, and I'm sure I will be. I'm kind of okay with this, like, temporarily at least. I do think there's value in these. I'm going to get my um, uh, Payne's gray and a little more white, catching the front of that. But, again, I'll be back. I will be back at the easel. The easel will come back. We never take anything, like, away forever. Right? I'll probably be painting raw and live sometimes. In the future, e even so, this is a short temporary thing, but I think I think we've got some good stuff out of it. I'm using again more of that zinc white, and you can see I'm just I think actually that's titanium white, and I am just really trying to capture some more light in front of the face, short strokes. If I get a little enthusiastic, you can see I went back with a darker color and came in sort of refined it because we're just capturing the part of the rock to see, see the light of the thing. <sighs> All right, I'm adding those shadows. So when we do highlights, when we do midtones, when we do those, I'm going to come back with just the Payne's gray, and and just it's important to come back and reinforce a shadow, and especially under the rock. So here's what's critical: you want to get under the rock where the rock seats to the ground. You're going to want to make sure that there is some deep shadowing, especially if there isn't a direct light source between where the rock and the ground meet. It's very important to have that shadow. Uh, oh, Alyssa Otter says, Chaos says, hi. Hi, Chaos. Um, and Cindy Strauss says, I'm going to paint this on an old cookie plate, just so three layers, but the old paint is coming through. So I'm going to, I'm getting my, Background kind of color is the uh, phthalo green, a little bit of the navels yellow, and some white. And that's just to kind of imply the color of that light hitting the rock on a few hot places. And then I'm going to tell you how to fix the plate. I'm hitting the rocks on a few hot places. And you can see that that's like little spots of, if you, were look, if you had a rose-colored light, you would have rose-colored highlights happening on your rocks. I'm going across the way. Uh, over there on the other rock, doing the same thing, mixing was... those highlights. I was just going back and trying to catch the comment. Mm. The one was asking about the, the bleed through on the cookie plate. Yeah, so what that is, is if you're having bleed through, what pause. you want on a ceramic uh, bit is you do want to prep that surface. And there's a lot of products out there. Americana, Deco uh, makes some ceramic prep. EBO makes some ceramic prep. And um, I think it's called Vitrol. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, plaid does, and it'll say that it's for non-porous slick surfaces like glass and ceramics. And you want to plant your whole surface with that first, and then that's going to adhere to that very difficult to adhere to surface, and then you layer up with the other colors, and you won't get bleed-throughs, and you won't get stuff. But don't eat off of it. It's not food safe. Can I add a note there? That uh, if you're using wood surfaces that are not art prepared wood surfaces you may have some bleed through or some staining come through those as well mm -hmm. so um, you can try a product called kills in your home improvement department which is designed for latex paint but mm -hmm. it may not be archival so it so relatively fun. yeah it, it comes with a 30-year warranty but you know we don't know if it's archival so just as a note there Christine Smith asks a very good question. Cinnamon, is Payne's Gray a dark blue color, or what is it? Do I need to get some? When I love Payne's Gray, it is a gray. It has a blue cast to it. In this particular case, I've added phthalo blue. To exaggerate that, you could use black. If what you have is black, you don't got to run out and put on a mask and go to Michael's and stand on your dot waiting to check out. You can use black. It's okay. You can if you want to, though. They have it there. It'll probably be in this in this line of paint in the fluid. 
Um, but you can also do craft paint. And remember, you can thin your black paint. So <laughs> I have no, I don't mind being on the dot. I'm perfectly happy to be socially responsible. I'm perfectly happy to be socially responsible. So uh, I love this gate, says Diana Angel. It reminds me of such a serene, peaceful moment in my life. I agree too. And then Callie Beasley says, the most important thing is cinnamon is taking care of herself. I do like it. I do like taking care of myself. I do. I do. I do. So I can tell I'm going to get in here and tweak the highlight soon. We're on step 17, guys. We are whipping through here. Whipping through. Whipping. Whipping. So I'm going to come in and refine some of these highlights. I just, I could see that. Like, that was the point in the painting. I was like, I didn't like how those shadows were feathering out. I felt like they uh, were pulling my eye too hard. And so it was just a good time to come back in and refine them. Listen to your art brain when it's speaking to you because it is telling you stuff. Even if you're brand new, you have one. You may not have used it in a while. It's there. You would love to be listened to. It has all kinds of ideas for your life. And as soon as you like nurture it and train it up, it's going to completely put a new spin on everything you do and see. It's crazy how that goes. Um, and Annette and Voss's look after you. I am totally, I promise I am being really, you know, you, you, were, you were very careful because you have kids, you have stuff, you have family, you know. You just do the things that they say you got to do. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add some more like little, uh, another fern. This is the next layer of fern. Same mix, a little more Diox purple. So it's more Diox purple. Uh, and I will sometimes get into my clan with the Diox purple on these kind of forward ones. Just trying to create a, a slightly more purple aspect. Get into my fluid white. Raise, you know, a little bit of the color. And again, it will be about putting out that dark value and then coming back and hitting it with the highlight. Uh, Shell Sussmans, I like the detail uh, demonstration this format provides. It seems I'm getting more out of this. Anytime I can get you guys to get more out of your lessons, more out of the painting tutorial, I'm about it, right? Because the goal is, I mean, I, I got to paint the painting, so I already got my goal. The goal is that you guys get to paint it, and not just that you paint it, but you love the experience of it, and you feel like you had the support that you need. Um, so, uh, Kelly Beasley says, I have so many recent projects that I want to do, but I go back to work in just over a week. <sighs> I mean, so many projects. I'm getting back into, I've got a little of my blue here, and I'm getting a little of my green, and I'm going to be making grasses with this turquoise color. Very interesting things of my blue and my phthalo green, and I'm going to put out some grasses. They're a little hard to see here. I'm going to go between rocks. Whenever you're painting uh, rocks with grass, you want to make sure that you, you integrate rocks between uh, uh, the grasses between the rocks because the grasses will fall anywhere a seed is or wherever a bird left it. So it's a great way to help make heavy objects like a rock feel like it's integrated into the scenery. You can see a little bit like I've added just a little of the zinc white so we can see it. Uh, Trudy Powell says, can you zoom in again, John? I'm sure John can. Uh, Desiree Whittington, I have small kids, so I just sacrifice sleep. And then Mary Youngblood says, time zones. Great. They are. So I'm just doing little upward brush strokes. It's okay across the well-worn path to put just a little bit of plant texture in there. It can be subtle. It can be slight. You can see the little slight grasses that are already put in. The grasses will really show up when we highlight. Them. That's when the grasses will really show. The contrast between the dark values and the highlights is what's really going to help your objects show in your painting. If you're having trouble seeing your stuff, it may be that your contrasts are still just too close together. We're still using the number four round. There's a lot of other brushes. You could use a fan brush for your grasses and your ferns. You can use your number four round, whatever makes you feel like it's going really well. I'm going to get a nice, I've taken my purple, initial purple mix that I had, and I've added some white to it. Right? I'm going to make a nice little center line to show the center rib of the fern, and then just paint some of the little outward leaves that are coming out to show that there's some highlights capturing those. And that's going to help those ferns. Sometimes it's just about, I'm across the other side doing the similar thing on anywhere that I had 
the stronger purple ferns, which is the diox purple and the quinacridone mix with a little bit of the titanium white. Oh, uh, PJ Piccolo says, so when you're so talented and generous. Thank you guys. You guys are talented and generous. You guys are talented and generous. And Juhi Khan says, yes, sup. Hi. <laughs> So coming forward, and I'm going to get a little bit of my pad yellow, my white, and a bit of my blue. And now I'm going to highlight my grass with that. And I did that so they would just feel like they had a little bit of the uh, gate light on them. Right, that gate glow. You want to put that gate glow all the places that you can, especially in... Uh, any of your plant life, any of the things that you have that you're trying to make it feel more overgrown, more natural. Expect in work like this to have several layers to block out a bit of time. Like we go through this very quickly. We're going to be over this in maybe just a little over two hours, right? You may spend more time on your painting doing it because one, you're going to want to see me do a technique and then you're going to do it. And you may rewatch a technique. And also, even, even where I'm at now, I'm kind of a machine. This mix is quinacridone and cad red, stronger to the cad red. This is my favorite flower to mix in with uh, blue, blue tones. I just love doing that. If I want them to feel like they're more in shade, I will mix them a little more on the quinacridone side then the cad side if i want them to feel like they're a little more in the light i'll mix them a little stronger on the cad side which you see me doing right here then on the quin side and so that's how you get very subtly a couple little differences so everywhere the little grasses are the little blades coming up i'm just adding little tiny bits of flowers i am going to put highlights on those i do recommend highlighting your flowers uh, priscilla velez says thank you for all your paintings i love them all Oh, well, that, uh, and uh, this format allows you to communicate with us directly as if we're in a classroom, like this way best. Anything to keep you strong. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> this, uh, like, I'm sure they're going to read this thing and they're going to go, you're fine. And I'm going to go, cool. I don't have no worries no more. I am taking my Naples yellow over to my Quin Magenta. You saw me mix a color, not really feel it, go back and mix it again. Because it was just too, it was too light. It was too, too much and it wasn't going to pop. And I wanted just this little, this little warmth on the interior side of all these petals. You want to hit the interior side of all the petals with just a little bit of warmth, pop them up, make them fun. You're going to like this. And Desiree says, that's a beautiful color. And I love these colors. Yeah. And have as many flowers as you like. You can have as many flowers as you like. There's no limit to your flowers. If you would like to plant your garden much more uh, fully, you can. Take the time, right? Like, we have classes here. We have a sitting time together. We try to cover as much as we can in, you know, anywhere between an hour and three hours. Try to cover as much as we can. But, you know, when you're at home, take 12 hours. Oh, my gosh, step 18, are we? We're nearly done, aren't we, John? Mm -hmm. Gonna paint, I'm going to guess we're going to paint in the trees. We may need to zoom out. All right. And Kiel says, uh, please take care of yourself, Cinnamon. You have many loyal followers who will be patient as you take all the time and precautions you need to stay healthy. Thank you very much. And I am. I, I am. I am. I am taking really good care of myself. I am listening to the recommendations. I have completely avoided vigorous re exercise as, as was required. <laughs> That was just the most unexpected thing I've ever heard a doctor say. Try not to exercise vigorously. Because <laughs> apparently it unsticks the glue for the thingy. Um, Christine Smith said, it was a panic attack you had. I didn't see what happened to you. No, uh, my heart just was beating at two different speeds, and it created a whole crazy moment for me. And uh, we took a little trip to, in the, to the ER, and everything came out okay. Well, my tests are good and did a follow-up and yeah. at the follow-up they were like hey you should wear one of these little monitor things in case this is a regular problem you don't know about in all fairness i'm just painting everything uh with the purple and panes gray all the trees are purple panes gray 
I am using my number eight cat's tongue, but you could use any brush that you feel comfortable painting the tree with. The, the tree is not cat's tongue specific. Mm. It was just a convenient brush. What, John? I was going to say, everything about your little heart incident has been an abundance of caution. Yeah. And we've really not had any issues, but we, rather than being concerned, we just took all the steps to make sure you were safe. Those bubbles were for Jennifer Sweeney. Thank you so much for my pair. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, we were just, we were just, it was a, we got a crazy reading on the little heart rate monitor and we just were like, man, yeah. I'll take a risk. It was, it was new and it was it was a lot. It was powerful, but it, it wasn't anything. It wasn't it wasn't like a heart attack. No. Because I got tested for that. They did. They gave her tests and they stuff. They did. They gave me the test for that. They they blood worked me. They x rayed me. I had my first ride in an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Uh super grateful to all the first responders, the, the the healthcare workers. Super grateful. And if I, I hope to not see them again soon. Yep. Yeah. They're lovely though. Wonderful people. So weird to, to meet people and then be just like, I hope to not see you soon. What was really nice we learned while we were there is that um, Prop did a whole thing where they gave shoes to uh, healthcare workers during the crisis. They gave them Crocs. I didn't know that about the company. I'm sharing that with you because I thought that was cool because we noticed everybody had a Croc. I'm like, there's a lot of fancy Crocs here. They were like all patterned like my Croc. They were given Crocs. I am now grabbing my number four round using that same mix of paint. That's my purple and Payne's gray. This one right here. I'm going to go on the toe of my brush and I'm going to make some wonky little branchy vine thing. Just to imply that, yeah, these trees are a little bit uh, more kind of crookedy and barren, but they still have leaves. They're still alive. Ellis Otter, I'm sorry guys, I grabbed my acrylic notebook. It's the last it's the last mixing recipe entry. Hey, it happens. And you know what? There's not a question anyone can ask that I mind answering. Like, I'm not gonna be like upset like you asked me a question about why is zinc white different than titanium white? That's like literally why I teach art is so I can make that experience easier for you. Um, Sabrina Bulk, did you wear your own mask in the hospital? <laughs> you know what here's the fun thing i do enjoy wearing my own masks um i i offered to upgrade to a more serious mask and they were like this is fine this is all that we need and i did hand wash it after um we have a lot of them we have a lot of i wanted to make sure that um they were good that they weren't something unexpected or not okay and they're okay they're good they're very soft to wear they're easy to breathe in they're not they're not a medical grade m90 keep you you know it's not that but it's certainly better than the little paper mask well i guess some of the paper masks are very serious though yeah so i don't want to just definitively say that there's information about its particular specs on teespring so you can read that just remember to hand wash and hang dry it's a sneeze mask. I do like having so many to, to match my outfits. Because I, I feel like I feel like in the other one, in the black one, I feel like a mask bandit. Like I'm 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 up to nefarious things. <laughs> Cause if you think just six months ago, if you wore a mask like that someplace, people would be looking at you like, Are you here to cause trouble? Mm-hmm. Right? You couldn't just go into the DMV masked. They wouldn't they would be like, that's they would be like, I want to see your face. Now, in the hospital, it was really funny because they can't see your face or whatever. They ask you your information, your age, birth year, and name all the time. Kind of, it's kind of like rough when they're like, we have a 50-year-old female. <laughs> like, you know, we don't need to be talking to everybody about that. That's not an announcement moment. But apparently it is. So, things you learn. Uh, Alyssa Otter, how much glaze to titanium white for mixing white? I would say um, one part white to two parts glaze, minimum. And then you can always add more, uh, uh, like, you can tint out white if you want to tint it out, but that would be the base that I would do mm. to start with. All right. Uh, hi, Rand. I see Rand came in. Uh, 
uh, Sugar Cube said, I had two heart attacks a couple years ago and it was scary. I'm really sorry that happened. I, I, I can totally imagine that that would not be fun. I am still using the purple and the Payne's gray in my number four round and I'm just drawing out little branches and I'm tapping in little leaves. These are the, these are just like the little bit of foliage that says, hey, yeah, there's a thing happening here. Tree's not dead. I have actually a couple of these trees in my yard that are like, I got an apple tree that's like, I have but one branch. Hmm. It has apples. <laughs> it, has, it has lots of branches with apples. It but does, it just, but it's, it was just real funny. It had a, it had a thready thing. Uh, Dia, Dia Menon says, thank you. You've helped me a lot since I'm a beginner. I'm 14, and I love your one-hoop painting tutorials. How long have you been painting? Uh, Dia, I've been painting my entire life. My mom was an artist and my grandmother was an artist. Um, but I, I will say it, it really doesn't matter as much when you start. It matters how much you love it. Because if you love it, you will do it all the time. And the more you do it, the better and easier it will get. And the more of you, you'll get to find within the painting. So I hope that you'll be like painting your entire life. All right, I'm taking the toe of my brush. These little, these little leaves are super easy to do. They're just like a little toe tap. Toe tap, toe tap, toe, toe tap, toe tap. Just one toe tap, right? They don't look like, like in the, in the totality, they look like leaves because sometimes leaves are on the edge foreshortened to us. Sometimes they're mm -hmm. three quarter view. Sometimes they're full view. So the toe taps do give us a nice effect of big leaf, small leaf, leaf in perspective. It's a good way to do it. All right, so that's the way my trees look after a hailstorm, says Liz Carnson. I can see that. Um, all right. Uh, Brenna F., we'd love to ask people their name and date of birth. Dude, you guys do. Name and date of birth. Like, what am I going to nope. sneak in and steal an x-ray? <laughs> Plus the tag you right away with the little bandy thing in the scanner. No, anything you guys need to do to make it safe and easier for you, I'm completely willing to do. I'm actually a good patient. We are on our last step. I am taking the mix of Cad Red and Dox Purple. I'm very carefully, one of the things, and I'm using uh, right now, I've got a, uh, my number four cat's tongue, and I'm using short little strokes on the tip of the brush, mostly focused at the forward edge, the interior edge of the tree. And then notice I've made a little knot by outlining a little oblong irregular circle. All of the interior of your branches facing the center opening between the gate, those need a little bit of highlight. All of them. A little bit. Uh, and Diane Angel says, are the leaves still a Payne's gray? The leaves are a Payne's gray and it has a little bit of diox purple. <laughs> PJ's like, I love the answer about how long you've been painting. I'm lucky, you know, I, I grew up, my mom painting, so I always had access to art supplies. Mm -hmm. But again, it's passion. Because I've been here long enough to see people take up painting at every stage of life. And when you start, doesn't really have anything to do with where you'll go in the journey. It mm -hmm. always seems to be down to passion and excitement about the process. That seems to be what's most determining. Oh, look, I'm making another little... I'm going there and I'm making another little sister hole, but I'm making it midway in the trunk on the toe, 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 toe. You can see me going wiggle, 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 wiggle. This is dot purple and cad red. It's a weird glowing color. Wonderful to use. Wonderful to use. Little short brush strokes. Making little woody, woody. See, interior, interior towards the gate. Oh, wait. Look, see, see how this is on the interior here? Mm -hmm. And then I get over there in the interior. Here. You, gotta, <laughs> you gotta practice your weather skills. I do. Our Thomas, great tutorial doing mine on a 12 by 12, and I drew a circle with a dinner plate. Can't wait to finish it. Perfect solution. I'm gonna bubble that art. Mm -hmm. I am. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Mary Youngblood says, thank you, Cinnamon and John. I love this painting. Enjoy this tutorial. It has been the best birthday week ever. Everyone, happy birthday, Mary Youngblood. 
So as I'm going through, I'm going to continue. This time I'm going deeper into the cad red. So it's still got a little bit of diox to it. But now there's more cad red. And can you see how that starts to create a little bit of a glow to the bark? And I'm using my number four round. This is a little bit more of a detailed brush. I do have still some dioxin longer in the cad red and I'm going to try to make the tree trunk feel bumpily and uneven and twisted by not just evenly distributing the highlight. I pick areas and then I run a run of highlight and I but on the inside edge I do definitely want to have that highlight. Uh, Tina Louise I love this format all that is missing is load 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 and add water to improve flow. That is a good point I could focus on that more. I need to focus on that more. I'm thinking about how to do that. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, hmm. actually, I love the suggestion. I love the feedback, guys. Yes, feedback. Yes, except the one where you tell me I talk too much because that's not changing. Can fix that one. That's I not think changing. Only editing can fix that. I've tried. You can't. It's you can't do it. There's it's always talking. A, there's just there's talking. It's needed talking too, because you're telling them stuff like I do tell them stuff they need to know. And I'm stuff. picking this, this this now, little more of this highlight, getting this in here. Just again, going around that little see how the knots are starting, the little opening knots are starting to show. Mm -hmm. That's about making sure that you highlight that back far edge and around it so that the, the center has the shadow and that lets you know that there's a knot. If you want to be creative, you could put little creatures inside those knots, little magical fairy creatures. It doesn't have to just be empty. They could be full. If I, if I had just decided to spend another two hours, I would have put wildlife and birds and butterflies and sparkles. So please have fun in your own. Laura Patton says she loves the talking. How many hoots is this? Asked Jennifer Sweeney. This is a full three hoot. So I've gone a little more purple and I've added some white, um, the uh, food white, I've added some white and now I'm going to add an even brighter highlight and isn't it wonderful how this creamy, uh, slightly more purple in the mix, right? It's still the cad red, it's still the diop, but it's got a little of that food white in it. Doesn't it make a nice little highlight? Now if ever you get a, a see that white hot spot I got for a second, how I correct for that is I just work back in it with my brush. And it will help it disappear. You can see that I'm not, I'm unevenly highlighting the tree to imply that it's rough. Wherever those highlights are, it says that part of the tree is forward and can catch the light. Oh, moderator Viridian, how are you, sweetie? Uh, tree pal, what's the hoot rate on this painting? Three. Um, if you check the hashtags under the video, what I've been doing lately is letting you guys know the hoot rating. So it says three hoot hashtag the art Sherpa hashtag fantasy landscape. So it lets you kind of know some things about it. Also, if you hit three hoot, chances are you're only going to run into my three hoot paintings that I've started hashtag. I'm doing a similar highlight that I did on the first tree over on this tree. I'll focus them more towards where the highlight will focus. This, this brighter highlight will focus more in the corridor of light around the gate. Um, you can see it's starting to bring the knot of the tree to life. It's bringing that all together, all to life. Got lots of little bark textures to do on the toe of the brush and making little, little wiggly, little toe based, and a little randomy, messy little stroke. Cindy Knox, thank you so much. Can I blow some bubbles for you, Cindy, while we're highlighting? Now, this is an interesting one. Where you put the highlight is going to tell you where that branch is. And if I continue the highlights, it's going to say which branch weaves or bends in front of the other. So watch how I do this here. Because it could have gone either way. But I made a decision and I went for it. Now you'll notice I kind of did a curve stroke there at the elbow joint of the tree where I'm trying to say that that tree had an elbow joint. By curving that stroke, that helped me bend it in that more foreshortened way. Ah, Stephanie! I have enjoyed this video from start to finish. Thank you for the lovely and restful painting, my friend. Well, Stephanie, I love seeing all your art updates on stuff you're doing on your channel, and thank you for coming by and saying hi. So, 
I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I haven't even necessarily checked in with everybody about everything that's been going on. Um, Gia Menon says, how can you contribute money through the comments? I can't contribute because it's showing me that it's not available in the country that I'm li living in, UAE. So uh, this is a feature YouTube has called Super Chat, and it is limited by country. I The convoluted nature of broadcasting in different regions rules, I, I couldn't even tell you what it is specifically that limits it, but some countries are limited. Um, so if you want to help out and you can't do Super Chat and you can't do Patreon, the number one thing you can do is do the painting, hashtag me in, tell your friends about it, like, comment, and subscribe. Because <laughs> those all really help the channel too. I am putting out some of my red and my cat red, my purple, and a little bit of my white leaves. I am now changing up the values. Sometimes the leaves will be more purple. Sometimes the leaves will be more red. Sometimes the leaves will have more white. I bet you can guess that the interior ones will run a little lighter than the exterior ones. Uh, Moderator Viridian says, remember not to get too frustrated if you find a lower hoot rating painting more difficult. We have all the ones that challenge us in different ways. Just have fun. Super spot on truth. So sometimes a new technique will be more challenging for you than another. Oh, this is the one where I a lot more purple and then it has still a little bit of the cat in it, but now I'm adding so much white. You see how like it's, it's definitely still in that mix, but it's a lot more white. And these are the leaves that are catching that center highlight a bit. It's important to get those, putting those white highlights in. Yeah, sometimes a three hoop painting you will sell, sell through and sometimes a one hoop painting, it's like, it's your, just, it's so hard. So I'm continuing to highlight leaves and then also you notice around the knot, I'm gonna keep playing with those lighter highlights as we come on the interior of the trees. Still using the number four round, still the base mix is dox, purple, cad, red, and white. If I want it to look more purple, I mix more purple into that mix. If I want it to look more red, I mix more of the cat into that mix. And if I want to lighten or uh, tint it, I'm going to add white into it. Da -da -da -da. Oh, goodness. I'm just checking the chat every once in a while. I think we've done pretty good. Nick Noletta Cardenas. Hey, lady. Hey. We're doing good. We're like here. I mean, like I this is so. still even sitting. I mean, these are big projects, right? Yeah. Uh, now I'm coming in and I, I have added in a little more of the uh, yellow into this. You see, I've got the red and I've got the white and I went and got into my tight knit yellow. Tight knit yellow mixes into this really well where the cad doesn't and it's a really strange thing, <laughs> but it does do a beautiful mix. And these highlights on the tree really speak to the light that's hitting the bark. Right? This is that light coming through the gate. Now we've given some values, we've done some shading, but this is the atmospheric effect of light. And you'll notice that these strokes are very short. Um, they're almost like piecing out bits of rough bark that might be tilted more towards the corridor that's coming through the gate than anything else. It's a really fantastic way to get that. Joanne Weber says, I appreciate your dedication to us through all your events. You're still teaching. It's so beautiful. I love your designs. And this format is exceptional. I'm glad that you like it. I feel pretty good about it. I like the format. I'm taking the sunlight uh, color that I've made and I'm adding it to the leaves. Again, that's, there's still, um, there is a little dioxin there, but it's really the cad red and then I added the Naples yellow and a little bit of the white to get this. Let's really, really make that that uh, inner tree pop, inner tree popping just wonderfully, isn't it? And mm -hmm. whatever we do on the right, we're gonna come over and do on the left. Let's really think about how we're going to come around these knots. You can see like a little knot in a tree. It's a busy business, isn't it? It's a busy business. Alyssa Otter said, what was the text alert text number? Again, I don't know if John can put up the bumper. It's a 33222, the Archerpa, oh, look at him go. John. I have buttons. He has buttons. He has buttons. We have highlights and he has buttons. So if you're just coming in, the highlight color is a pitch of dogs, purple, cad red, 
Heighten it yellow, enables yellow light. Heighten it yellow and white. If you need to know more about that color, there's a blog on my website. If you need to know more about round canvases and how you could do this, even if you don't have a round canvas, it's on the blog on the website and on the community tab here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, guys, subscribe. Hit the bell. Make sure you get the notifications. You can sign up for the notifications from us. Friday nights, we do easy paintings, one hoop, super fun stuff, super chill. Saturday, we paint something in a similar topic, but much more involved. So if this was fun, but you're like, eh, it's a little much, go check out last Friday's and do that painting. It's really cool. Uh, Anjana says, I noticed that you're not washing your brushes often. Is this all dry brushing? This is a very good point, and this is something that I need to address in future, I think, this Friday I may not have it addressed, but I'll have it addressed by Saturday, which is showing you guys the water cup I am rinsing out. Mm. Um, when, when the colors are getting too loaded, when um, things are starting to get muddy, I am rinsing out. And I need to uh, demonstrate that a little more in these, but I am rinsing out, and that's very astute, and thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Wing Sister, is the text notification now available outside of the USA? It's not. Not yet. So, but YouTube has one, so sign up for that one. <laughs> that's, that's what the sub button is for, is if you can't get our text notifications. So we are working on it. Amber Card says, I love watching all tutorials. Been watching just over two years. Do you have a tutorial on prepping and painting surfaces with acrylic, like glass windows and mirrors? I don't, but that is a very good suggestion for a video. I have continued to mix in that same color, but I've added more of the uh, tighten it yellow now and more white and now we're really focusing on these really yummy creamy super this is like the last stage of highlights i think on the front of the tree like we're coming to the end here guys mm -hmm. we have a 12 inch round canvas if you need to know anything about the materials definitely definitely check the uh, description i know many of you are on mobile i have also put some links and information in the comments um, there's a link to the video page uh, where everything I'm talking about is uh, available for you guys. So I, I just put it everywhere. And then it, even if you still can't find it, just ask us and we will go get the link for you. We are here to help. Yeah. So I think that's really good. Oh, happy birthday, Mary Ann. Happy birthday. Catching a little more strong highlights on, you know, some of the tree here. You can see it's really hitting... The light's really hitting the tree on the left even a little more as it's coming down so that you can kind of see that pick up. And there we go. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? I'm, I might be signing. Let's see what I'm doing. I bet you I'm looking for a signing brush because I, I can remember. never find a signing brush. Yeah, I can't remember if you signed it then, 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 then had some grass. No, that was the last one. You did, you did sign this one, and then you were kind of uh, Wingster says, I still have all the YouTube and Facebook notifications available. I get them twice sometimes. Thank you so much. I know that can be kind of a pain to get the notifications. I appreciate the effort it takes for you guys to stay connected to the lessons that I do. I really do, because I couldn't do this without you. If you guys weren't up for showing up and into being here, I couldn't do this without you. It would not be possible mm -hmm. in any way. So, all right. We've signed it. We've done it. I cannot wait to see yours. Can we go to our end screen? All right. This is perfect. So here's our little hey Twix. Here's our little end of the video. I like this format. Do let us know what you think of it. If you love it, if you don't love it, if you want to see more of it, you want a mix of easel in this, what you guys need, let us know. Uh, I am okay, but this is a useful thing for me to do at this time. There's the text notifications. The stuff is in the Teespring store, TAS15 for 15% 15 off. If you look down below, generally there's products and stuff featured, and there's always new releases. There's a whole collection going with this. At the end of the day, I really want to see your painting. So however you address this painting, I want to see it. Come by, share on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. In the group Art Sherpa Official, it's a great place to share. If you are not in the Facebook group, which I totally understand because Facebook, 
But if, if you want to join the Facebook group, be sure to answer the three questions. We just want to make sure that people's friends don't just drop them in a random group. You've got a request to join, and we do ask that you answer the questions so that we know you're a human. Human. I, um, Watercolor Wednesday is coming up this Wednesday on Facebook at 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Am I going to get a Kevin tentacle or just get water? Do you, do you want Kevin tentacle? I think I could probably do that. I have to. I'm going to, I'm going to wave in the ocean here. I'd have to make him appear over here. I think next to you. Oh, oh Kevin. Kevin says goodbye. So definitely come by and uh, check out that watercolor class. And next Friday, we're back for one hoot. And it's a gorgeous villa scene that is one hoot friendly. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.